There is a world as tangible as our own, impossible to see yet unavoidable to sense. A world enveloped by a seemingly unending ocean of forests. Buried deep in that forest, tucked away neatly within a blanket of twilight, lies a quaint little cabin. And in that cabin is a bunch of guys who's a bunch of bullshitter. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the 37th annual... It's Q and A Reddit Sleepy Cabin Sleepy Cast episode. For, for, for you fun? ugly folks who don't realize what's going on, basically every fifth episode of the podcast, we take your questions, which and we answer them out of a little hat. And by the way, <laughs> if you give your bu- if you give your fun bucks to us on Patreon.com, fun bucks, well, it, yeah, are you fun bucks? <laughs> your parents' hard Patreon allowance. <laughs> You can, uh, we'll answer your questions in a regular episode, but this is for you people who don't pay. Well, we should explain that we're no longer going to do every five episodes. Yes, yeah, starting episode 30, we're doing every 10 episodes will be Q&A episodes just That's because... That's right, this is episode 25. 25. That's a quarter of a Se- hundred. Season. Yes. Dun- That's five dun- more dun- than dun- 20. Dun- That's two less than yeah. 27. Who Let's, thought we'd get this one? Who thought we'd Not still me. be alive? I thought we were going to kill ourselves before episode 30. We're going to be bringing in a few guests to lighten we're gonna it up, make some, it a little we're gonna more have funny. Like, That's right. We're going to have like funny thumbnails. With like crazy faces now, boobs. it's gonna be yeah, lots of boobs. Stop laughing. You better, you better yeah, gonna have like a laugh track because a lot of people yeah. are saying, you know, when do I laugh? I don't know when to laugh. We're gonna add a laugh track for those of you <laughs> and a boo, a boo one. Yeah, if the boo, jokes are funny it's enough. not a good joke. You're gonna have boo. notifications where you, I say now nah, and you yeah. laugh. Yeah, you guys are all gonna laugh. It's gonna be great. Yeah. <laughs> we have some crazy guests coming on. Like Anyways. Fred, the Annoy Orange. My <laughs> hits. I just hear. I'm talking. You know, yeah, I just think hits. she's making her re-debut. For me, she hasn't been on the internet in a long time, but she's coming back for, for those of you who season two. That, for those again. of you who heard that delicious crack, I was drinking a um, a delicious monster energy drink. A d- all, right, all right, you interesting guy. Listen, all right. Jeff off the rails. Jeff, oh, yes. is, Jeff is crazy. Listen, Look, Jeff on Jeff, Jeff eats like sugar, gets sugar high, so it's jumping around, you guys. He's a crazy frog. <laughs> Who knows what he's gonna do? What <laughs> Jeff, Jeff fucked up? He's like, I just had a bunch of chocolate. I'm a sugar high. And I was like, Jeff, calm down, man. Just sit down. I'll be here. I'll be here for the next three hours. I'm Sorry, going. But a ding, 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 ding. Speaking, speaking of behaving and speaking of Q and A's, Jeff. Yes, sir. Do you do you happen to have a question locked and loaded and ready to? Fire off. All the chambers are full, but I'll t- All right. shoot off the first one here. Shoot it off. D&D Movies 42 asks, have any, have any of you considered doing more serious animations? Something that's a drama and not funny. <laughs> Mick, that why don't you take like, this one? Like yeah, I mean, something. I would say for the most part, um, I'm already doing <laughs> half of that because none of my cartoons are particularly funny. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, oh. As far as dramatic <laughs> ones... Wow. I, d- I mean, I've had them in mind. I-, I have a lot of projects in mind, but will I ever have the opportunity in this lifetime? I don't know. I mean, yes, I have lots of ideas in mind, but probably because um, I have a lot of like film stuff in mind, you know, like a lot of like more dramatic filmy shit that I would mm-hmm. then also translate to animation. What's up, um, Corey? You had your I hands held up like in yes. class. <laughs> yes. Uh, I don't think. I could ever do something with seriousness, not not because like I just can't do it, but because it's not really in my nature. Sure. Like it, for me to write something serious, it would have to be like bullshit joking serious, like over the top, something like in the vein of Chode, where it's like light humor, right? Like, insulting jokes, but serious. I could do something like that, but a real tone. It's not something I know how to write. I don't feel like I write the characters. What was, that, what was that movie? What was that movie with the guy with the uh, cancer uh, with Gordon 50, Lovett? 50. Was that? Philadelphia. 50-50. Yeah, 50-50. Was that, that, did that have like a, Philadelphia? That was the guy Gross. with the AIDS. Oh, well, Tom Hanks fucking... <laughs> no, it wasn't, I mean, there's a lot of jokes in that, but it was fairly serious, right? Yeah, I guess, uh, yeah. I mean, I guess you could consider that film serious. Though. The one with Tom Hanks was serious, too. Philadelphia? But it was also hilarious, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, that hilarious scene where he dies of AIDS in the laugh track plays. He's crying. My favorite scene, my, I, I thought the funniest oh scene was when Antonio Banderas was banging him up the butt. That was, that was pretty funny. That was the boy from Philadelphia? Yeah. That was Antonio? I thought it was, wasn't it? Was it was it? a very attractive homo sex man. <laughs> I could be wrong, I haven't watched that movie in a long time. I've tried writing serious stuff, but Have it was... You? Dry humor always sort of seeps its way in. I just start 
writing dialogue. That's and what I'm can't, saying. Yeah, like, it, get it away would, from it. I couldn't sit there and write something serious like, "Oh, you killed my whole family." I got, I'm not writing Spawn. I don't know how to write. Like, if I was being serious, it would have to be over the top, fucking serious. Did you say Spawn? I love how Spawn was Spawn? like. Is that, is that your go-to a Punisher? <laughs> Punisher. <laughs> oh, okay. I get Spawn and Punisher confused because I'm an idiot. But in Corey's DVD, was that your go-to in your yeah, in his <laughs> library, <Punisher>. serious. <laughs> Fucking Marvel. <laughs> what That's about Schindler's drama. List? It's Under drama, list, he has Spawn and Punisher mm. next to fucking Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> <laughs> no, Punisher. It, well, I'm talking about like create like because Punisher like the serious yes. seriousness of it as a Marvel movie. Sure. It's Marvel, right? Yes. Okay, so yeah, that's something I would like. It, it would be cliche like that. I don't want to do something like that. It would have to be something serious like. Not done before, but everything's been kind of done before in a serious like yeah. everything that you've liked that was serious. I couldn't write something like fucking um, the show everybody likes, but I saw the last the finale of Daredevil. A oh, fucking Breaking Bad. Breaking Corey. Bad. Oh, Breaking this Bad. pissed me off. <laughs> Corey never watched one episode of Breaking Bad, but for some reason you watched the fucking last hey, episode. I saw the first episode and the last episode. <laughs> I, I guess you, you, you cut the bullshit right out. You got right to it, Corey. Didn't you? <laughs> and then I was okay, drunk. Yeah, you still had to drunk. I, I can fill in the blanks. I was <laughs> drunk and I played the direct TV game where I tried to guess the synopsis and I got it fucking right. God. Of the whole entire series. So let me tell you something. What, he, he cooks drugs, you mean? <laughs> He's a science teacher who knows how to make good meth, and so all the bad guys are like, hey, stop doing it or work for us. And he's like, no. He's like, okay, we're going to kill you. <laughs> That's right. Breaking Bad. Yeah. Who needs to watch Fuck it now? Vince <laughs> Gilligan, you Spoilers. tell us that. <laughs> Corey called your game the second he saw the first episode, you hack. You think you're a writer? Uh, hey, I like the finale. Well, what happened was... <laughs> I like the finale. You saw the first episode cool. and the was, last episode. I was really drunk that night after running laps because Swain told me to. So I was already sick and woozy and I was what watching... What you running laps? You ran around? And after it was over, I was I stood up and I'm like, wait, really wait, fucking wait, good show. Wait, hold on. wait, you got drunk and then Swain said, run around, it'll wear it out. Yeah. He is such a fucking troll. He's I'm an asshole. I'm sure, you were doing it on yourself. You were running your... <laughs> You I was much... like really hyper, and he's like, Corey, you know what helps if you run? <laughs> Here's what I remember. That is literally on the you bottom drunk. list of things you should do with your drug, Corey. I remember you running down the street, full speed, drunk, coming back, <laughs> coming back, then then simultaneously while saying you were going to throw up, pulling on my door handle, trying oh, yeah, to get in my like, car. Oh, oh this puke. is that night. Yeah. That's true. And I was panicking it's, it's true. because I just bought that thing, and I'm like, you're like I'm gonna throw up, <laughs> and you're like pulling. You need to get into the car so he can barf. Yeah, I'm telling you, open the door. I need to get in your car. I was turning, I was turning like bleach white. I'm like, what is <laughs> happening? What is gonna happen here? <laughs> and then Stamper, like a goddamn angel, is like, you can get in my car, Corey. I'll drive you home. I didn't puke though. I didn't puke. That's that good. Day. You good. Didn't? No. You're a good boy. You're a good boy, Corey. The last time I puked from drinking a lot of beer was um. When, when someone got like a huge six, not six pack, I think it was a 24 pack, and I had six beer, blue moons, and then I went upstairs to say hi to my girlfriend, and then Who I puked this? in a bag right in front this? of her. It was like uh, probably eight months ago. What about New York? No, that wasn't beer, that was liquor and shit. Oh, I see. From beer alone. Well, so that story when fucking John comes down. Yeah, we need that's to tell whole, that story. That's a whole banana. That story is an exciting but, story. To answer the question, yeah. So Chris and Zach, what about you guys? Yeah, I, 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 could, I could, I could, I could, I could, I could try. Look, I've always wanted to kind of go into each genre and see how well I can do it. Like I've always see, I've always wanted to see if I could do horror well or something serious well or something actually well. You know, I don't know. It'd just be, be fun to experiment and see how each thing uh, is. And but there hasn't been a project on your mind. Here's a Not question for Zach. Though. Yeah. Somebody said, "Hey, what would you?" If the History Channel said, "Hey, Zach, we'd like you to edit." A World War II documentary in your style. What, do you what, what would you do? What do you mean, edit it? Like, like, or, like, if they gave you a bunch of footage and said, "All right, here's we tell you, to tell you a particular battle or something in World yeah, War II." Yeah, I think that'd be fun because I feel like a lot of people make it boring. There's mm -hmm. there's a lot of ways where you could like if you if you look at things the right way, like the, the history especially. There's a lot of ways to make it because it is interesting. Yeah, people fucking like do it. Just decided to top of Europe for no reason, pretty much. Yeah, it would be you know. <laughs> and Tell you pretty much within like the last century, people are still alive who were there around for. And that. I can already see it too. Like you'd have uh, Adolf Hitler, like a slow zoom. You know how they do the slow zooms, and they no, do. I wouldn't make it. Then right like before that. he cuts away, you do like a funny face drawn over him. Or <laughs> no, something. absolutely not. <laughs> Just one frame. I would show the human side of Hitler. I'd show him like you burnt my eggs. These eggs are burnt. It's fine though. I'll still eat them anyways. I don't want to be rude. 
I chose that side of Hitler. The real important stuff. Like I chose Stalin. Like, I chose Stalin trying to shave the. Like, he's just a human. Like, he's not a bad guy. He's not a bad guy. He's just one of those annoying. So you thought like, he was doing what was right. Yeah, you would have you this know. like this like light music behind while you were like Adolf liked his eggs over <clears> easy. <throat> Stalin couldn't shave properly. <laughs> Oh, and I guess they fought in a war. FDO stubbed his toe. That's why he was in a wheelchair. <laughs> Just really important stuff. Nobody remembers that. It's like, oh, it's so interesting. It's like, all I know is he got shot. That's the only thing I know about him. Who? And now I know that he was in a wheelchair. FDR. FDR? He wasn't shot. No, it's a... No, no, the other one. Sorry. Stalin? JFK? Yeah, FDR, JFK. There's another one I just <laughs> This is going to be like... My fucking yeah, goofball, they all have fucking situation. initials. They have letters or they have same Yeah, whoever shit. goes by their fucking initials. Did you hear? Did you, did it bum you out when you found out that RDJ got shot? Who's that? RDJ? Yeah. <laughs> I was just. I was trying to. Fish, I was trying to fish you into a situation. I was hoping you were gonna give an answer like, yeah, that sucked. It's Robert Downey Jr. Yes, man. it is. RDJ? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> RDJ, JFK, FDR. If RDJ was assassinated on the shot of like the next. Avengers yeah. movie, or it was like a, a freak accident. Like the dude got shot. The someone's cr on the crow. Like yeah. the main guy got shot. Brandon Lee. If it was like one of that, and he was like shooting his hand out, and yeah. it fucking actually recoiled and knocked his block off. You know he doesn't actually have like a rocket yes, hand. Yes, he does. That's, that's a visual effect. Corey explains something to you. He I, doesn't have a real Iron Man have costume. Have you ever Corey. seen cartoons with extinguishers? You put them on the back, you snap off the fucking sprayer, and it goes flying. That's how they do it. Yo, that is actually how somebody's wife recently died. They said it was one of those ca those gas canisters, and I think it was on the set of something. If you guys Google it, you'll find it. But so, but it went flying and apparently it went like all the way through <clears throat> the chest cavity. Oh yeah, but everybody loves her? Raven. Yeah, wait, who was that? Everybody loves Raven. The wife died on that for that. Oh, was that everybody it? Everybody loves Raven. Yeah, she died. It was horrible. It went through her fucking body. Like yeah, something it tore like a big cartoon. hole in her. Yeah, she was like, oh no, she's dead. Oh, I'm geez, expecting oh. to die more from the sh oh, shrapnel she's explosion. She's dead. That's no, it was the whole canister. Whoever, I, if, you find, if you look it up, the whole canister was like a big bullet and just. Yeah, that well, was that, that pressure was brother, is gonna happen. Loves Raven, who's okay. the brother? Yeah, you know the big brother is always like, oh, the geez. big troll guy. Yeah. yeah. Oh jeez, it went right through his fucking head, killed him. <laughs> fucking die, oh, my my brother's dead. Ah. <laughs> Everyone claps. <laughs> Raven. Should should we move on? To yes, the we should. All two? right, next. What's next? Eighteen topics. Are we, are we got eighty more questions. Okay. Uh, all right. Now, all right. This is uh, you know. Here's the question. Optional second part. Okay. Z z Ze Zealous Zombie, Zealous Zombie 96 says, All right, here's a doozy. You ironic meme loving fucks. Oh, fuck you. Oh, wow. <clears throat> okay. It's to get That's sad. a good start. Oh, go around the table and each present a compliment to each other that isn't backhanded or sarcastic and not related to animation or drawing. Now, I was talking to Corey about this. Now, somebody also asked a question uh, asking us to mention what we hate about each other. Let's do that one first so we kind of. <laughs> So now, Corey said he doesn't like something about me. This is going to yeah, fucking yeah. end, but no, no, this is I know. Okay, uh, this is it's okay. Jeff wants okay. to. Know. I'll just I'll tell you, what, what Corey and I can just okay. go, and then we'll just do the compliments. You guys can go to right, I don't want. I don't want, want to. Get, I don't want you to be crucified. I don't want it to be something. <laughs> yeah. It's not something I necessarily hate, and it's not something I find annoying. It's just the kind of person you are. Where. <laughs> See, it's not something that can be fixed. It's just you. When we go to places and stuff. Yeah. Like. Sometimes you you won't go, and it's mm -hmm. like when we do things, you won't go, and it's just how you are. That's okay. just your kind of person. Right, right. And that to me, it's like, because you're my friend, it's like, oh man, I wish Jeff was here, but I'm not going to fucking go right home about it and cry myself to sleep over it. It's just something, you know. Okay. And that's my own personal thing. Now, no, hold on. Now, now you just else? mean like he doesn't want to be involved, or does the thing that actually bother you when Jeff says he's going to come over, no, so and then yeah. he just fucking doesn't even show up? <laughs> like something. Is that what you're talking right? about? I mean, I'm not complaining about no, it. No, it's. Just, I was just it's, trying to it's, it's teeter tottering. On See, now things. it's interesting you bring that up, Corey. <laughs> It's interesting. Oh no! I'm gonna lean back and let you two uh, get into the Can jail. I, Jeff, oh. Jeff I'm just, not, I don't Jeff mind. I don't mind. I don't mind. I don't. I don't care. I'm just saying. Is it? Is it interesting that everywhere you go mm -hmm. to a party, you're only there for like two hours, and you're like, I gotta get the fuck out of here. Uh, yes. And you're like, you, get me out of here now. Does that annoy you though? 
It doesn't. It doesn't <laughs> annoy me. It, I'm just. I almost feel bad no. that you even go in the first place because you're like, I'm sick of this. I gotta leave. It, it's not so much that. I have this like weird thing. Um, I guess when I go to a place and I meet everybody, mm -hmm. I don't want to stick around. I want to say hi unless there's somebody I generally know and can talk to. Right. But let's say for something like Pico Day, I was the first one out for everybody. Right. And the reason is because once I say hi to everybody and I've already drank and I'm on that point where I'm buzzed. I don't feel like I could last much longer. Like, do, I'll either be passed out somewhere in my room where someone would steal my shoes, or I would fucking, like, just be so drunk that I would be out of control, and I didn't. I don't want to, like, do that. So. Sorry, when you're around people, do you, like, does your energy get drained? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty quickly, when I'm around new people. That's, like, that's introvert. Yeah, it might be. Other people are the opposite. The more people that are around, it's like they're they're sucking their power in like yeah. Goku. It definitely fucking drains me. It yeah, absolutely me drains me. I, no, I'm the same way. And I'm the same way. It drained, like, I was at Pico Day for six hours. Mm -hmm. I was there. I saw everybody. I missed a few. And then I was gone. And I wasn't coming back. As much as people would think Zach is an introvert, I actually see, I, I feel like when there's a lot of people around, and Zach's getting some attention. He he's like a solar panel. It's like he I get does. Nervous. He just absorbs it, and he gets more excited. It's only because I get nervous. It's a defense. It's a defense mechanism. I'm the same way. I, I always feel like when I meet the people, I'm always a little bit more out there, just so it's like, fuck you, you yeah. motherfucker. Don't like me. I don't care. I don't give. Fuck you. I expect people to not like me when I first meet them. It's different. So I'm purposely though. a little bit over. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. I'm kind of more. I'm kind of an exaggerated version of myself. So it's like you don't like me. Fuck you. I don't expect you to like me. Be here, motherfucker. You know what I mean? <laughs> It's, it's, it's a defense because I'm built up for people not so liking you're a me for jerk, a long time. Is what you're I'm, not, I'm not a jerk, but it's like, <laughs> I, I, I'm, no, I'm not like, hey, you know, hey, dickhead, or anything. But I mean, like, uh, I don't know, I feel like I'm a little bit more energetic, so I'm almost an exaggerated version of myself. So it's like, if you don't like this exaggerated version of me, fuck you. It's, not, it's like almost like I, I make people not like me on purpose because I expect them not to anyways. It's, well, I, it's not, know, I don't go out of my way to be annoying or a dick or I can't really describe it. It's hard to do. So when I was so when I was younger and I was bouncing around like from Malaysia to Taiwan and Taiwan to Japan or, or Taiwan to, to Malaysia to Japan and then back to Seattle and then to New York. I had this thing where I only knew people for like a couple of years at a time. So I kind of had to develop a system in order for me to determine who my friends were going to be in a very short amount of time. Yeah. So yeah. essentially what I would do is, is I'd go to a new place and I would just let it all fucking <clears throat> hang out. I would burp, fart, say whatever disgusting things I had on my mind, get stupid plaster drunk, you know, just basically be who I am, you know, after you know me for a while, but immediately. And it actually, it's funny, like how quickly, you know, you get to know people. And there are a lot of people who aren't used to that. Like mm -hmm. they, they need to be kind of weaned into it. So like a year or two would pass and they'd be like, you know, when I first met you, you're a fucking ass. You were so drunk at that party and you were just farting on people and you were just <laughs> fucking humping things. Well, like see, I don't think I like that. I, I don't know. But I, but you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. be, but I feel like that's almost the same kind of thing in a way. Yeah. It's like, fuck you. I don't expect you like me anyways. I'm, I'm unlikable. And I know you hate me, so I don't give a shit. Yeah. It's more like that. I'm, I know I'm not. I'm a, I'm a fucking... <laughs> let's let's make this a little positive. All right. Okay. How about how about Chris and Zach? How about myself. you? I'm gonna I'm gonna kill. This is a real threat. <laughs> this is a cry for help. I'm gonna Wait, kill we, myself. We tonight. have to do. What we hate about us for each person. No, I'm not, I'm not, no, 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 fuck that. We'll, we'll come back to that later. Right. Yeah, you know. bad idea. How about Chris and Zach? Or, sorry, yeah, Chris and Zach each compliment each other in something in some way that people aren't maybe okay aware of. Okay. Something okay. nice about each I'll other. Go, I'll go. I'll start. I'll go around. Corey. Um. I don't care what everybody says about you. You're not a piece of shit. And, and, and <laughs> yeah. Your penis is average, Corey. Don't listen to the haters. <laughs> no, you know, Corey, you're very dedicated. You're always, you're, you're a very hard worker. You can sit down and work for 15 hours. It'll be like, I haven't worked up today, but piece of shit. Yeah, no. I'm and I admire that. Chris, mm. I hate your stupid green shirt. It pisses me off. until I see it? But you know something else? He said not to be sarcastic. Oh, like, yeah, well, you already ruined it. <laughs> uh, fuck off. This is what I hate about you, Chris. <laughs> Sick. Chris, I, I think I think Chris is very very good at thinking of original ideas. There are things that Chris says, or I think, well, how do you how do you think of that? I, I admire that. It's creativity. We're just thinking of such a completely new, unique idea. It's 100 percent unique. It doesn't borrow from anything. It's just its own thing. Thank you, Jeff. My little boys, Jeff. You've grown good. so much over the years. <laughs> my, my sweet child, my little sunshine ray. Yeah, Jeff. I think you're very good at dialogue. I think Thank you're you. very good at writing stuff, and I think you're very good at making stuff work. All right. Admire, I, you know, no, 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 be, I'm going to go beyond that, too. I admire your honesty. Yeah. You're not, the kind of, you're not the kind of guy who's like, 
Hey guys, uh, you know, I'm a crazy party guy. Like, you and yourself are like, look, I'm an emotional sack of shit. Do I, do I, I burn I too many bridges with my honesty sometimes? No, no but I... You keep the ones it's, it's that are not, It's keeping. not that honesty. <laughs> you know, there's two it's kinds like of people. There's Manhattan, people... Keep there's like the kind of people who are like, yeah, I'm really honest, and then they say what they shouldn't say. It's like, yeah, you still have to realize a lie, you idiot. Like, you're not stupidly honest. Like, there's some guys who are like, yeah, I'm honest, and you see a guy, you're like, yeah, you're fat, you're gay, wait. It's like, what, I'm honest? You're not that kind of guy who says that. I'll lie when I have to. That's what I mean. That's, yeah. you, you draw the line when it's supposed to be. When it's supposed right. to be. Okay. Nick. <laughs> Nick. Let's move on. All right. Let's move on. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. We can't just have one person. No. Let me tell, like, let me tell you about Mick. It's, it's, it's... I feel like Corey and Mick are hard workers, but in their own different ways. Corey will sit down like, 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 a, like, a, like, a, like a psycho and work on the same thing for whatever. But Mick, he's a multitasker. He I can't believe it. He walks into the office. He's tweaking out. He's like, yeah, man, I got to do this, this, and this today. I got to do 45 things today. And, I, and you know, whatever else. And, and he's still... Not a piece of shit. That's the cocaine, though. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah. Yeah, most right. people, most people would be bitter fucking serial killers who snap all of off they, they, if they did the amount of work you did. You used to? I did a lot of coke. Can I say what I admire? <laughs> about everyone? A lot. <laughs> yeah. Can I, can I say what I admire? No, wait, about wait, 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 one sec, Mick. You, you, can't, you can't just say that. And move on. Mick. <laughs> if, if I was to, okay, if you were to offer me cocaine, no. If oh. I was to say, Mick, build me a sandcastle out of cocaine. How big would the sandcastle be that you've done in your you life? You did that. That I've done in my life. Yeah. It wouldn't be that big. Yeah, but how big? Do it. I don't know. It'd probably be like. Oh, my whole life. Your whole life. Everything whole... that's gone up my nose. Yeah. A, a sandcastle. You know, I don't know, maybe like one of these days. That makes, oh, that's that's petite. One of these days we're gonna get to the bottom of the mix of mysterious past. I don't have a We're gonna figure out yeah, that. We're gonna figure that. out you killed some Malaysia or my something. Coke, <laughs> I've done coke before, but yeah. I've I've only done it once. And that was when I was already on doing Molly. So yeah. once you do Molly and then you do Coke, you're like, yeah, Molly's better. Yeah, but your nose is still yeah, rotting at this day. <laughs> I'll tell you what. It's only if you're like snorting enough <laughs> dead bodies. How about, how about like Mick, Corey, and Chris? I'll each pick like two people or something. We'll move on to the next question. Yeah. Because this could go on forever. I'll, I'll just go. I'll go through really, yeah. really quick. Yeah. Corey. I like how little of a shit you give about anything negative that anyone will ever say about you. <laughs> you can it, never say anything it negative. It bounces off me. you like you're made of rubber and they're made of glue. Sticks and stones. Mm -hmm. yeah, but that, a little bit different than what... <laughs> okay, what? Zach. <laughs> Zach. Oh, oh, that's kind of the opposite. Zach, I am genuinely baffled by how... Autistic? Yeah. No, but no. <laughs> you're ruining it. Zach, I'm amazed by how little of a sh... Or, or, or have... What's the word? How tiny his penis is. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen. Zach is so selfless financially. He will be negative in the money and he'll still go out of his way to buy you something at the store. He's ridiculous. Jeff, you are a <laughs> lumbering Atheist, shit. Ableist. I, know. I like how blunt and honest you are no matter what and it helps people at the end of the day even though it's kind of mean. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, if there's someone at a party who's like pissing people off, you will not stay quiet. You will say you're being a fucking loser, dickhead, <laughs> and then they'll never do it again because yeah. you did that. Is, are there are there any helpful critiques where like that actually helped the person, not yeah. just me being an that asshole? Is helping that, them. that is helpful because right. they never did it again. They became a better person. I think this is making me look bad. No, it's right. good. No, no trust no, no, no. me, Mick. I like how uh, <laughs> I like I like how yellow your skin can be in the sun. Thank you. Okay. No, I like how nice Mick is. The end. Okay. I, 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 I feel I feel warm and fuzzy. Like I need to give off. Corey's, Corey's, Corey's got the warm and fuzzy. He's like, see him. He's all he's yeah. all pushing. Corey, Corey, okay. you're what, super what dedicated. Like about me? Oh, no, you no, no, okay. Corey. <laughs> no, it's Corey's super dedication. Great animator, Zach. You have a huge caliber in terms of like your quality control, and you always like do what you have to to get to that. Chris, literally, I don't know if there's any medium that you could pick up that you couldn't be great at. You just seem to pick Not shit up autistic. all the time. Yeah. <laughs> And Jeff, I think you're easily one of the best <laughs> artists, and not only that, but the speed at which you kick out shit is kind of semi-autistic, and that's... The, I'm not fast. But you know what? Stamper's not here. Stamper is easily... I mean, he's also Stamper a jack-of-all-trades. Should, should we all so say generous. something nice about Stamper? Sure. He's easily one of the most generous guys I know. He's absolutely the most... Like Zach, he'll... He'll spend... He'll give... Like, he'll just... It's he'll crazy. He'll shirt just, off his back and like he doesn't even know. Thunder. He doesn't even know you. He no, doesn't necessarily have the money, but he'll give somebody just like two hundred bucks. Like here, I, I, this is to help you do whatever you yeah. need to do here. And yeah. absolutely. All right, that was gay. Wait, yes. I, All right, fuck you. I want to go. Oh, okay. You yeah, want to go? Corey, Fine. Corey, yeah, I said right. what I hate about Jeff, and then he said. <laughs> 
<laughs> like, we just figured you happened? were full of hatred. Okay. okay. What, what I moderately are annoyed by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, I thought this was... No, he did yeah, this yeah, for No, no, I didn't say what I liked. Oh. Zach, oh. what I like about you is I like how methodical you are with what you say. Like, you don't just spit shit out. You have a lot of stuff to back it up. So you're not a shit talker, you're a, you're a talker that can dish out shit. He's eloquent with his eloquent, arguments. Yes. You're very, yes. like, you You would never go up to someone and be like, hey, um, you wouldn't just say shit about someone, you would have shit to back it up. So I like Thank that you're, you, Thank you, I like that you're, um, that's why you can write editorials, because you like know all the shit. I like Chris. That. Mm -hmm. God damn it. Like everyone's already <laughs> said everything I want to say about you. But it's like, Chris, I love how bro -y you are. You're you're like the best bro. To I'm talk, a bra. Talk shit about. Yeah. Like I can pretty much talk to you I can talk to you about fucking anything. That's so good. it's like I have like no no worries to like so I can like share my Secrets and shit, and I have nothing to worry about. You know what one of Chris's things that he didn't like about you was? That what? you never shut up and you keep talking to him. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> pissing him off every day. Corey, I, I never want to hear your voice again. I Corey, this is a joke. You should actually die. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... No, Corey, I greatly appreciate all that. Yeah. Corey. I like sitting in our little tents that we make out of our bed sheets. I know. And tell and, secrets. And, like, discuss, like... And kiss each other on yeah, the belly. Yeah, kiss each other. Yeah. <laughs> Swaps each other. Swap saliva. <laughs> tell spooky stories. Talk about Kevin. Oh, and uh, Jeff. Yeah. Like, I guess it's not really with art, but yeah. I love how, um, like, again, it's like you're, it would be a lot like Zach. You're very committed to what you do. And you, you're also, um, like, just the amount of sheer detail you focus on stuff. Yeah. Like, it's not enough that it's just moving. You focus on the little things that people would forget. Yeah. The kind of stuff that people appreciate but don't remember. I should take that on. Jeff, Jeff will draw things, like, and stuff, when you'll, you'll, like, freeze frame. You're like, God damn, Jeff, you did these, yeah. you put, like, ten hours into these things, someone's gonna see for one I second. I know, and it's, like, great, because it's, like, that's, like, something I appreciate. Like, there's, there's art, you know, I'd say, peep, you know, there's plenty of artists that are like that, like, stampers like that. Uh, the guy, the guy we met you? recently, Red Minus, great Red guy. Oh, yeah. He's like that too. Like we're super like, I won't. Go, I'm not gonna call us all autistic or something, but we're super OCD with. Well, that's good. Details. Yeah. Well, everything has to be. Maybe almost too. I don't. I don't know if it affects us negatively no. when we spend too much time on no, things. No, because but. it's it's worth it, and I understand that because I'm a perfectionist. I, I do something mm -hmm. over and over, and then when I release it, I'm like, oh, it looks bad. I gotta redo it sometime in the future. Mick. Hmm. Make. What I appreciate the most about you is how much of a community man and how you can like <laughs> hold something together Like you're the glue in any bind like without you We would be fucking lost and probably like eating like shit out of toilets We're moving on Flambolt asks One of the most notable things about your collective comedy is how far it pushes boundaries. Yeah, I really Enjoy that about your podcast and everything you guys do. Here's the question. Where do you personally draw the line? Is mm. there something so offensive you won't make fun of it? And or is there something that offends you in comedy? Hmm. Mick, why don't you uh, start this off? Um, I'll just say this really quick. I um, I love everything that you guys do. I don't always... Uh, it's not like I would use the word retard or the N-word. That's because you're a fucking retard. Yeah. <laughs> and you're I, I prefer not to use some of these words or make some of these jokes mm -hmm. myself, but I don't judge anyone who does. Um, unless I feel like it's extremely malicious. I don't feel like you guys are ever particularly malicious about it. Yeah. What if it's a retarded N-word being malicious? <laughs> um, then they, that's what they are. If I ever do use the word <laughs> retard, I use it in, in terms of like really being pissed off at somebody. Like When I use that word, I literally mean... like I would obviously never call someone who is handicapped a retard, but it's like if... If somebody is so You're basically calling them inept, would you call I, them? Yeah, like they are so like they to me are truly retarded. <laughs> like, like the people like they may not have a quote unquote mental handicap, but as far as I'm concerned, they're worse than. I mean, they are just. Whoa! Would you? No, no, no! It's like they're like they are less capable. I would rather I. I my brother, my brother-in-law has cerebral palsy, right? Yeah. And I would much rather have a conversation with him than a lot of other people. Than a fucking retard. That, right. That, like some guy at a the bar Danny who's McFrown. like sitting there screaming at the television, slapping girls' butts, high-fiving his friends, spitting his beer all over the bartender, and then looking at me going, hey, you want to fight? It's like... Well, Nick, oh, in, in, in my defense, I was a little bit <laughs> right now. <laughs> also, I don't like to do rape humor unless it's like clearly a, a light-hearted. Like, you know... You know, there, there's no... There's, <laughs> There's no there's like, like, like a light-hearted rape, no, you know? No, 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 I've just, I've seen, there, look, I don't want to... I just shoved the tip against the rest. I'm not going to name any names. I didn't go all the way. I'm not going to name any names, but like, 
you know, there, there's she was been some, too, there's to been be some fair. rape humor that has been extremely graphic, and I feel Funny. out of like, not even remotely comical in You're any way. You're saying the next Dior squeeze. Mick. Yeah, and now when I say the word rape, I know ever like so many like ninety percent of the people are thinking of a man raping a woman. That's not what I'm talking about. And rape in no scenario is okay. However, you know, a bull getting raped by a tractor is kind of funny to me. I know that, you know. I, I think it's also uh, where you place the joke. That too. So if you do a rape joke where the joke isn't for shock value, you're literally saying, aha, this stupid cunt got raped. It's like, that's not really... That's not funny. Sure. That's not funny. But if you make the rapist, you know... He cake, a rapist cake and erection up. That's, that's funny. You made, you made rape a little bit funnier. What, what do you think is the farthest you've gone, Mick? As an example. It's like the most thing you've like, alright, that's the farthest... I think I've gone in the offensive zone. Yeah, what do you say? Okay, that I, that was far for me. I should that way. Really? I can't put That's a really good question. I don't think I've ever. I don't really. You think... ever felt you, like you were like like just just writing a line, your personal line? You're like, Ooh, that was that was that, that was a buzz cut. Not. Re- I, I don't think I ever. I don't think I ever really do that. I guess like the worst thing I possibly did was way back when I made a cartoon. It was about it was a pacifists fighting game, and I think I had Gandhi. And then, like, a bunch of cops come and beat him with batons until he's dead. And then it's like, you died, you win, or whatever. I don't know, but, like, I think that was about the worst. That's, I don't where, know. that's where you were like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. I, no, you know what, even then I wasn't like, I shouldn't have done it, but that was about as far as I personally pushed it, I think. That sounds like a good mobile game. <laughs> I guess. I- yeah, but I've been a part of plenty of projects that, that definitely, mostly your guys' <clears throat> projects. Fucking some cancer boy falling on his... On his two. All right, look. <laughs> look. Exploding. The Pokemon cartoon I will never live down, and <laughs> the other the game I made with a Swain called Ching Chong Beautiful. That's another one. Well, I love that game. That game's largely not that bad, besides the name, but there are a few little details, <laughs> like like one of the stages actually takes place in the, in the crater. It takes place in a crater, and on the map, it's where like Nagasaki is. On the- <laughs> <laughs> Sweet dude. <laughs> there's, a, there's a few. There's a few lines of dialogue in there that are really. I think Swain, Swain like said something. This had nothing to do with me. I'm like, here, record some shit. He, he, he had his friend record a line calling the characters in the game zipperheads. <laughs> Holy fuck! If anybody wants to know why you call people zipperhead, it's when you run over their head with a tank and it leaves a tread in their head <laughs> like a zipper. I didn't know that. The Don't laugh. You, that's the, not funny. The more you know. Yeah, the more you know. It's something do, do, do. soldiers share with each other. Um, Chris, I don't know. Would you like to go over this question? I mean, I've made my shitty, edgy, humor cartoons back in the day. Yeah. Um, I remember your swastika neo-Nazi Christmas thing. That's not even that bad. It's not that bad. It's just a guy coding a swastika. No. Uh, that got banned in Germany. Did it really? Yeah, it still is. <laughs> I mean, it, like, swastika stuff is made usually. Yeah, it's just a fucking swastika. I, like, the worst shit I've ever made was fucking slightly rapey things. I, 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 I don't think any humor is out of boundaries as long as it's it's clear you're not being malicious and there's funny context to it. Yeah, I, I, the, the one place I don't like to go is just being mean to people specifically. Like if you you could you could like make fun of like progeria or cancer or something, but it, but if you're like going after when a you person, single out somebody who is you single out good-hearted, somebody, they have no reason to be in the situation they are, and you call them out for it and make a that's joke what I about mean. that. Yeah, just for personal shit, they can help. It's like, well, you, what are you fucking? Like, I don't know, like, I don't know, yeah, just, yeah, no, like, it's like, like, it's like the same Louis C.K., right? Louis C.K. is, like, one of the liberal fucking heroes of comedy, and yet, like, I, when he's talking about his own daughter, it's like, yeah, my daughter's a fucking retarded cunt, you know, and, like, well, everyone they're actually, laughs. They're not, they're not retarded, though. I mean, like, in a sense where it's, like, if you, if you there's, like, a bird that can be like, oh, man, you're fucking deformed. It, I don't think, yeah. that's, not, that's not funny at all. One of his funniest bits, I mean... He was, in, he was on the Opie and Anthony show. When he, when he explains the word nigger, yeah, where it came Patrice, from? Oh, yeah, with yeah, Patrice yeah, yeah, yeah. O'Neill, who's like the blackest black yeah, ever. and it's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. yeah Patrice has explained that where the word kike came from, but he's actually telling the audience. Yeah, kike you know, right. And Louis like, you know, the word nigger came about, and he saw some guy being a nigger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it just a feeling. Yeah. He's like, he was just being such a it's nigger. It's just a feeling, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> but any other comedian who said, like, if, if any of them... No, no, but, but, I, but I mean, like, like... Patrice is actually a good example. I saw a roast he was on where they were like making fun of his diabetes. I was like, that's not that funny. This is kind of, that's mean spirit. It was mean. Like, Have you so ever weird. seen a good roast? No, but my point is when you that's single a, somebody out for something, I fucking hate it's roast. like, oh, you're I do too. Roast. It's like, 
It's not funny. It was the same so try hard it, like bullshit. It's yeah. what the, it's like what it always feels like a roast is. It always feels like they're they're like um they're hoping to steal the show up on stage. Yeah, everyone is taking a shot at trying to steal the show. I think you can yeah. make fun of, I think you can make fun of somebody for making a bad decision or saying something like saying something or doing something stupid, but if you make somebody like for what they are, it just comes off. Like, like the like, Bob Saget, like there was there was I think there were a few funny things about Bob Saget and his past with drugs and To and be fair, Bob shit. Saget, he's done a lot of awful shit. Yeah, it's like, true. No, not not just his like drugs or his like full house. Like he's made some terrible shit. Yeah, but I, I don't think anything's off limits as long as you look. The, the two most important things I would say the most actually there's one important <clears throat> thing. There's one important thing and one kind of important thing. The most important thing is intent. If you are saying something with the intent of making somebody laugh and not not say it to be hurtful, right? And it doesn't land. Like if you make uh, a rape joke, but you're trying to elicit laughter. And nobody laughs. I don't think you know, you're trying to be funny. That should be that should be important. You're saying intent also, and context. Context is the second important yeah. thing, but I think intent is the biggest. If you if you say like, oh, you should get raped like a rape victim, are you? You're, you're intending to hurt the. You intending to elicit some kind of upset reaction. That's not trying to make anybody laugh. What do you think of the amount of people out there who really can't even don't even understand the difference in that? They get mad on the well, internet. People like to be offended. Yeah, that's true. There's well, people legitimately don't understand. They'll fish for ways to be offended, and they'll, yeah. they'll use it against you. Well, and the thing is, too, you'll see... I, I got into a fucking argument with somebody on Twitter, of all places. You know, I'm sure that's never happened before. An argument on Twitter, who knew? And the person was talking most. about rape jokes. But they also like It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. And I showed him one of the most popular Always Sunny bits, was, which was the character was Dennis and the, Character back, they're, they're, they bought a boat, mm. and they're like they're the, they're buying stuff for the boat, and uh, the character Dennis is talking about you know taking the woman out, and you know we should get mattress, we should get like a mattress for the boat. And he's mm. like, why? And, you know, because they'll go out with you, you want them taken by the boat, and they you know they can't refuse because of the implication. And he goes to this weird thing where it's like you know a woman, won't, won't, you know they can't what are they gonna say no to me? I want a boat in the middle of nowhere, and it's kind of it's pretty much a rape joke. Yeah. And I showed it to the guy. I was like, what do you think of that? He's like, oh, that's funny. I was like, so you laughed at a rape joke. I, I think the issue is people draw their lines everywhere. There's no consistent objective like lineup for what's a good rape joke, what's a bad rape joke. No, oh, yeah, yeah. And even if you don't like rape jokes, well, then they laugh at a black joke, they laugh at a, you know, well, no, that was a, my exact, joke, that's my a exact, joke. That's exactly what I'm talking about, the Louis C.K. thing about yeah. racism jokes. Where people are like, there are no good, like it's not never okay. Never, you, that word's never funny. It's like, what about this? Like, yeah, what, yeah, exactly. You can never use that word to make. There's a joke also a very little... famous, uh, uh, very very funny, uh, very famous skit with uh, SNL skit with Chevy Chase. Oh yeah, and, and, uh, and Richard uh, Pryor. Richard Pryor. Oh yeah, <clears throat> absolutely. Yes, I have. Of course, yeah, I have. Yeah, it's, it's basically Chevy Chase is like a guy hiring somebody. He's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, let's play a word game. I'll tell you a word, and you give me, you say what you think. The first thing comes to mind. He's yeah. like, dog, cat. Uh, yeah, but then it gets great. yeah, then it grows. Yeah, then, then, yeah, then he's like black. He's white. He's a tar baby. Yeah, jungle buddy. He's, he's <laughs> yeah. just niggling. He's hockey. Like crack, oh yeah, hockey. He's like dead hockey. Yeah, dead hockey. Yeah, it's, it's a funny bit. But they, they made that word funny. They they made that word. They put it in the context where it was funny. It was appropriate. And the joke wasn't just a to be fair and, and to be clear. When we say funny, I, I think it's important to remember that I'm not saying the word itself isn't funny. Look, well, no, no, I'm not saying that. I, I think when like when I was talking about Lucy K, when we're talking about this too, when we're saying it's funny, what I mean is it's accepted by a general populace as being funny by left yeah. you know by very liberal minded people who are finding a lot of these jokes funny if you were to like say uh like yeah, you can't make rape jokes. You shouldn't be able to make jokes about anything because you know, like Bugs Bunny. Yeah, gets where do you draw the line? He gets hit on the head with a hammer, right? Yeah. There's at least like 50 people in the past whose faces have been smashed in with hammers and their families' lives have been ruined. But you don't yeah. see them saying like, "Stop making videos about hammers." They're probably some people now. do though. Yeah. yeah but, now especially. But it's like, come on, you can't do that. Like you know, the new oh, Popeye, yeah. the new Popeye design that they were teasing. He didn't have any tattoos and he doesn't smoke a pipe. Yeah, yeah he stupid. looks like he looks like a fucking little Abercrombie hipster. Yeah. Somebody, somebody was saying like, oh, maybe it's like a prequel, but I, I almost don't think no. that was. A, I think there was no. something else going on there. No, it's politics. They don't yeah. want to promote smoking and they yeah. don't want to promote tattoos. What are you talking about? The new, uh, the new Popeye design, where he's oh, yeah. wearing like his fucking like Converse and his. I think like, they they dropped that movie Abercrombie anyway. So, so yeah, yeah, yeah I, I think he only did that to uh, show it to the producer. Yeah, it was just like a teaser or something. Yeah. But still, can, I, can I say something? Because yeah. it kind of goes with all you guys were saying sure. um i feel like what it comes down to is uh i think one of the things that makes something funny is when it's off limits because it's like 
you when you when you listen to a joke and it's an offensive joke, you in your mind if it's funny, you laugh at it because you know it's offensive. Right. But you're aware that it's joking. Like right. it's and I think that's where jokes come from. Like if you make a rape joke and like it has a malicious intent, then it's not yeah. funny because your brain well, tells you like this well, joke I, is is meant to be and it's like that that's not funny. And it's like when someone does a, a comedy bit, yep. And they yep. talk about the topic. You know in your head, like, oh, he's making a racist joke. The joke is racist, but it's clearly well, not intended to be super That's why most of the time racist. when you hear racist jokes, it comes from a black person or a Chinese yeah. person or a Indian person. And when you see jokes like obese jokes, it comes from the fat person. It's almost like it's okay because I'm that. Therefore, I hate that I shit, can, though. I can I, touch that. Humor comes from discomfort. In yeah. Way, no, look, right? no, yeah. I, I, look, a good... You're never. You're not gonna find anybody who says rape is funny. Right. He no. seriously believes it. Or 9/11, or the Holocaust, or cancer. Sure. None of the. Dude, the world is full of things that seriously are not funny. They're horrible. Life is pretty horrible if you look at it. Like if you really look at it. Sure. It's got a lot of very bad things. If you can take something like that, and take take a subject that everyone goes ooh, they kind of freeze up about, and you can make something funny out of that. That's. I think that's the best kind of comedy because you can go, you yeah. can tell a joke about, like, hey, you can tell a joke about fucking corny, you can tell a joke about shoes, you can tell all kinds of jokes, but if you can make a, a funny 9 11 joke, 9 11 is honestly the least funny thing that ever happened. It's fucking disgusting and horrible. Sure. There's nothing about that's funny, but nothing about anything's funny. If you can make death or alcoholism or AIDS or cancer, if you can find the humor in that, I think that's, that's. There's a beauty. What it does is it allows for a conversation. To and take by the place. way, you're not laughing at the subject. Right. You're saying, "Holy, you're you're, you're using that subject as a foundation to tell a joke as a as a springboard." Right. You're not making it the joke. You're not saying, "Look, rape, rape is funny. People being forcibly, you know, raped and, and traumatized. That's that's funny." No, you're not saying that. You're saying this is a disgusting subject. Let's see. Let's see if we can if we can find anything funny about not about this, but with this as a cradle, as a bowl, and then we'll fill the inside with with soup, a joke soup. Probably. No, and I honestly think that it, it opens up conversation like that. That Richard Pryor. Yeah, um, absolutely. Like that scene. It's like by by not talking about it and by acting like it's off limits. <laughs> I don't think it open. It doesn't open up a dialogue about it. it. Doesn't open up understanding about it. It doesn't. And, and I think that. The drawback, though, is that you get a lot of people who don't understand context, who don't understand empathy, who don't who don't have yeah. experience. So then they just take the joke part of it without the actual yeah. substance no, yeah, part they, of it. They hear the malicious. They, they think just hear it's the malicious, malicious, and they think that's the funny part, and they just roll with yeah, that. Yeah, it's like, oh, you're laughing. Did you know people get raped in real life? It's like, okay, right. I also think I also think uh, humor is therapeutic in a way. Like comedy, about that jokes like that are, are funny, and I, I also like. One of my favorite comedians ever is Norm, Norm McDonald. That guy can make anything funny. He can be, I, I, if you watch this special, he did a whole thing about Alcoholics Anonymous. He did a bit about his dad dying of a heart attack. Yeah. Like these things are just not funny, but he somehow made them funny. He did a whole thing about, well, he, has, he has a podcast. He did a thing about 9-11. Yeah. So he, he somehow made it. He made a fucking breast cancer, Angelina Jolie getting her tits cut off for breast cancer. He somehow turned that into a funny thing. That is the least funny thing ever. He somehow made a laughter come out, out of that. Not not of that, but out of that. Uh, so to summarize, no, nothing's off limits. I think I've gotten over, I think I speak to a lot of people when I say I've gotten, I've gotten over this one of the worst shit in my life from laughing at it, finding the funny stuff in it. Yeah. I mean, if you look, if you look at comedians, I'm not putting myself in that group. I'm saying if you look at comedians, a lot of them are very depressed people with whom, it's the way of dealing with shit. And I think that's true for a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, it's cathartic. No way. It is. All right. And, uh, the last thing I would say would be, um, I don't know, I linked it on my Twitter, but I just want to say uh, I linked a debate between comedian Jim Norton and this, this lady who was debating whether things like rape jokes or so on were funny. And throughout the course of the video, this woman made like, like rape jokes, like technically rape jokes, jokes that involved rape. She, but she wasn't even thinking, she wasn't realizing, she was doing it, but the whole time she was like making jokes about racism. Things like that, but she was, but she was doing it like in a mocking way, but it still got laughs. Right. Those were still rape jokes, though. She still told the rape joke they got laughs. Right. That's that's the point. To, to to draw these arbitrary lines, these things go. Well, this is a rape joke. Well, that's not a rape joke. You can't do that, man. Yeah. You can't draw the line where you think. I mean, you can, but you look like an idiot if you're laughing at this and this and that. But not that. That that's not funny. She was making observations that other people were able to find 
humor out of, and whether she was yes, doing and she it, was it did you do it? She didn't realize it, right? And that it look that's a joke. Yeah. If, if you can make people laugh, then you you told a joke. I don't understand how like you know like oh you can't make rape comedy jokes, but you can make jokes about cancer, and it's like isn't that that's my point? It's either you know there's, like, there's a famous quote by either Trey Parker or Redstone, I forgot who said it, but. Everything's okay or nothing's okay. Exactly. There's no point. If you're, if you're gonna cut the light up here, then cut the light up there. You're being unfair at that point. Exactly. Nothing's off limits. That's basically how I feel about it. Personally, like, if I really wanted to dig deep and start making, like, I take a context of what's offensive and start making a well-written joke around it, which would actually be a pretty good idea to try and make a cartoon around an offensive topic. See if I can pull it off, but that's I should neither also say, here nor there. None of us, never, none of us ever go out and go, ah, who can we offend today? Who can, what can we say that's crazy today? No, right. I used to be like that when I was an obnoxious faggot. Well, every, every kid, every kid, you kind of grow out of that. When you, well, that's what I mean when I was an obnoxious faggot. Yeah, I can't, uh, you know, even if we, I'll say, I'll say it like this. Even if a joke we tell is shocking, doesn't mean we set up for it to oh, be shocking. It doesn't mean it's a shocking joke. And this is something, too, because I just said it, faggot, like... That's people are offended. They're like because the you know the gray area between gay and, and annoying. And it's like when I use faggot as a term, I use it like a little shit, a little annoyance, like a fucking like a you know something that's pissing you off. I'm never like it's not a derogatory statement to gay people. And then it's like something again like there's you, there's so many things to be offended about. Why worry about a joke? It's like you could be offended about things that actually matter. I don't know. Do you guys want a silly question? Yeah, let's go silly. Mo Epic. Hicks asks if you could make an ex extinct dinosaur. If you could, sorry, if you could make an extinct dinosaur exist today, what would it be? If you could bring back something back from the dead, anything, anything or just anything, dinosaur? anything alive, anything that cockroach, a corosaurus, something that's extinct, <laughs> dumbass, it's real, is it I'll bring back an Andrew Thor, a corosaurus, a bring back like a, like a human-like like thing, but not a human. Just we can make him slaves and fuck him and stuff. <laughs> Perfect. Next question. <laughs> Wait, hold on. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Can I have two? Okay. Was well, this like the super? Is like the superhero question? Are you yeah. like? Because yeah. I, I have a land. You're greedy. Ready. You're greedy, Corey. Yes, I want that, and I want <clears throat> um, a water dragon. And it's a Corey, the water dragon is dead. It's never coming back. <laughs> the hell would I got, No, <laughs> I can bring it back. The water dragon is never coming back, Corey. One's land, one's water. <clears throat> no. Call it the water dragons were fucking killed right before they saw their nuisances. <laughs> Understand? Water dragons are just big platypus in the sea. <laughs> They're like dodo birds and lizards. All right. I don't know, Mick, did you want to contribute or if you just. No, no, they gave. Water dragon was also my the answer. Only okay. ex All right, me too. extinct <laughs> animal I can think of. You all think of water dragons. Like the only the extinct animal I can think of are the most common. Like, you know, um, a dodo bird. That's the one that everyone always remembers. And then there's like. The fucking the ones that evolve like the saber toothed tigers and shit and just dinosaurs. I'd be fine them. with brontosaurus because they were they were vegetarians and they were herbivores and they were. Would fairly you really docile. bring back a vegetarian? No, no. Yes, I'm not going to bring back a fucking T Rex to come and wreck bring, havoc. Get one of those little ones that like run on their hind legs. You can have it as your pet. What carry about, around in a. What about Galapagos? Yeah, what about those? I don't those even need to see. I don't even need to see land animals. They're all kind of like big chickens anyway. I'll take like a pterodactyl or some kind of sea creature, some kind of gigantic Crazy shark. Sword. Yeah, well, sure. You, you can have a land sword. animal and a sea creature, which is a Galapagos. Yeah, see, I. I have a water dragon and a Corosaurus. A Corosaurus, by the Corey, way. Is, Corosaurus is versus the Galapagos. Who wins? Corosaurus is smash him. He's got a big dome. They have these huge domes. On the front of their head. The Corysaurus is just a dinosaur. The Corysaurus has a fucking dome on its feet. <laughs> it's just a dinosaur, dinosaur that's Corey's around. face. <laughs> yeah. 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 I don't know if you got. I don't know. I don't know if you guys feel like touching on how shitty YouTube algorithms are, but I don't know if we want to cover that again. Uh, I, I, I went into a little bit on Twitter. I just want to say. Uh, I just want to say. I want to say of, something too with you when you're done. Okay. I just wanted to say that a lot of people originally. With the, this is kind of the way this stuff that happened. Everyone started doing cartoons. Then you realized you could make money doing it. Oh wow! Then you started making more money. Then you said okay, and it started becoming a job. After this a is over the course then, of like a few years. Yeah. Then after a while, it turned out you, we started to lose money. Okay, that's fine. Uh, we started to figure out, kind of think out loud. Okay, this is happening. How do we fix this? It's just a heads up. And then, then there was this reaction from the public, like, "Oh fuck you! You what? You think you think you deserve money for your cartoons? You greedy fuck!" And I was like, "All right, I'll move on then. I'll, I'll get do something that actually gets me real money. I'll go." Either go to a studio job, move to tr traditional stuff, whether that's TV or film. And then there was a bigger outlash that said, backlash that said, oh, you lazy fuck, well, you don't make cartoons anymore? You don't get the best of both worlds. You either, 
We look. When you said get when people, when the people, the people who said get a real job for years, when they got real jobs, they're like, you fucking lazy bastards. Yeah, you don't get the best of both worlds. I, I feel like, and that's something that um, I could explain like over and <clears throat> oh, yeah. over no, and no, over. No, they don't. They're but not it's like that, the though. thing is, the way the system used to be, and the way it is now, is specifically catering to a certain kind of dem- like not demographic, but style of videos. Right. The way the system is now is. View time, um, amount like of a video, and uh, minutes watched. So there's like three factors that affect that video now, and even then, uh, so consistency. Your yeah, yeah. Frequency. And there's, so basically, there's a second factor <clears throat> which not many people know about it, but it is on the radar at this point, and I think more people should know about it. Is a, ter- a term called subscriber burn, which is based on how many people actually do those three things of the video, and how many people like. Let's say you skip a video, you don't watch a video, and <clears> that <throat> video goes by, and you don't pay attention to it, and you wait for them to upload another one. Well, the problem is, the more the, if you skip that video, the YouTube system is like, okay, he doesn't want to see that video, so it's automatically taken out of your what to see feed and replaced with some other bullshit for you to see. And what pro- problem happens is it starts <clears throat> weeding out all your subscriptions, so you have to manually go to stuff because the new system, it's like you know people who used to make millions of views back then, and they upload a video and get thirteen thousand views yeah it's because they've completely been burned off the radar and when they release something they need either word of mouth from reddit or they need boosts from people they know that are popular that's and that's good. how the new system is it caters to and the way let's play videos are not to continue is it perfectly um engulfs that concept like you upload a video you want to see the next part so you sit through the whole video and and you get all the minutes watched, you can set your runtime to like specifically how long they want, which is typically 10 minutes, and it exactly caters to the system. And I heard now they're recently changing it where you have to make a minute at least if you're an animator to even make a proper CPM. And because of that, it's like, okay, here's a fucking job I do every day where I get paid and get, um, I get paid at the end of the month and I even have enough to spend money on shit or here's a job where I can barely make enough rent and it takes me like fucking six years to do one thing and the community is, is shit to begin with so it's not even worth yeah, the payoff yeah you work like a fucking dog and then they still and then you just you get like people are like oh it took you this long where's my next one it's like oh move on then I actually fuck think, you man yeah exactly I think one of the bigger problems it's not even YouTube anymore it's actually become like Facebook and other, and other things because like with let's plays or live action videos you see the people in it, you hear the people in it, you know they made that content. Yes. But when it comes to cartoons, a lot of times people don't know who actually animated it. They don't know who's voicing in it. So people no. rip them, they cut out the credits, and they fucking repost it up to like Facebook or oh, something yeah. to and get then, the attention. And Facebook has like the worst oh, recording yeah. and, and system. Imager or whatever, but like, or Imager, whatever. Like the Pac Man cartoon that I did yeah. has more views on on Facebook and Imager than it, like three times as many views than it does actually on YouTube. So more people have seen this cartoon, have no fucking idea about the people actually involved with it than, you know what I mean? And they just think because that the person who uploaded he, it is involved. Because it, like, it sort of steals a lot of action video. It's like, oh, I know who this guy is. Exactly, about. no, that's what I'm no, saying. Like, Animation is the perfect thing to steal and it's why they keep doing it because they just lop off the credits and try to Chris, take credit for it. Mm. There was that one like fat idiot who like used to make like truffle <laughs> shuffle videos and yeah. steal your there was this kid who stole my he had like he got ninety thousand followers on Facebook in like a week from your Leviosa video. Like, hey, yeah. make more of that. Make more of that video. Yeah, he was like, I made this. It's pretty sweet, right? Yeah, he's like, waiting. Hey, you're great. Waiting for you to upload more so you can fucking steal it. I don't know what happened. I stopped paying attention to him, but he you would see videos of me. It's like silly fat kid dances, and he would just be like pulling his shirt up, showing his tits, and everyone would laugh and be like, "Man, I found you through the Leviosa video. You're so funny." Yeah, that's some Goonies, by the way. Yeah. yeah no, I know. No, that's what you call like a fat kid. Shaking his titties. Shuffle, yeah. shuffle. Should we move on? Yeah. yeah, we have a bunch of questions. I don't know if you. Guys I've actually made videos like about my 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 feelings about YouTube. So oh, I, yeah. don't, I don't need to. Can talk I say more one last it. thing though? Go ahead. Just one last thing. Realistically though, <clears throat> the kind of stuff I'm doing with Jeff, I would rather have my name on over spending ages on something that I would put on YouTube. Oh yeah. I feel YouTube is more of an archive thing, but I feel like I, the thing I'm doing now. Is more like something I'd be like, yeah, I helped do that, and it's, it was well worth it. I'd still like to make animations and put I would them too, out there, but yeah. I would like to not um, be on. I would not like not to be on somebody's fucking to do list. Like it's like, okay, you have to do this as, for me before I kick my bucket. It's maybe like, when I'm done this game, I'll make some more. I don't know. Animator, yeah, I think, the thing, I think after doing three minute videos for 
five plus years. Yeah. I, I kind of, I'm in the mindset now where I just want to make like 20, 30 minute videos. Mm -hmm. and it's, you can't do that on, on YouTube. I don't, I don't mean to keep going, but it's like another thing that bothers me and it's like you guys, we all get this. It's like, if you don't animate, people are just like, oh, they don't animate anymore. It's like, well, just because we don't upload stuff online doesn't mean we're not issue. animating. I think this is the biggest thing. People assume that it's because we're not making videos, we're not doing anything. Yeah. We, we're doing more stuff. Animation is like, seriously, five. I'm animating of what every we're doing. fucking day for like eight hours, and then I find time for other stuff, but yeah. I still always go back to it every single fucking day. Yeah. It's like, I'm not just like taking I, breaks. I've now always, and then. I, I, think, I think the best thing anybody can do is look at YouTube and look at the that is a stepping stone and not a fucking bed. Yeah, treat it like the Bible. Honestly, treat now with the patrons and with the commissions that I have, YouTube is basically a dumping ground for me. At this exactly. Point. Yeah. That's all it is. Exactly. I mean, if I have a cute little idea I want to fucking fart out, yeah, I'll absolutely put it there. But for the most part, the things that I'm making, I'm making with my patrons, with um, you know, uh, the commissions that I have and, and hopefully they're things that I can share as well yeah. on, on the channel. But and then also then, you know, I don't want to say it on here, but then there's other opportunities that I've been exploring that are more television based no, 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 yeah, and I'd yeah. love to share, you know, whatever I can. And with it's that. also yeah. like, it's yeah. not so much that I'm done animating. It's like, I'm done with YouTube. I would rather focus on Sleepy Cabin or my own shit. I'm not focusing on YouTube. I yeah. want to do stuff for this, do stuff with you guys. It's like, I don't want to have to worry about making a silly cartoon for like someone who's who like for a community who just fights for the funniest yeah. comments. And YouTube right. goes out of their way to ignore animators and Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Unless you're like verified and they know who you are. Just so, so it's sad. Like you get a fucking gold star. It's so sad. Hmm? These, these people, these animators, they put in so much fucking effort and Yeah, there's a lot of really good animators. They don't animators. have to be yeah. such such uncaring cunts like they could do something to help an animator out, but I mean, I mean, it's yeah, Google. I, I, They're a multi-billion-dollar yeah, company. They, they, they care, could yeah. help out they the could. animators in their own way. They could, yeah. But it's funny. Like I would ever complain about myself or any of us, but the truth is, there are people that have it so much worse. People who put yeah. in more time than us, who make oh, long absolutely. Yeah. who are fucking, you know, they I mean, graduate from Goebbels or whatever. And they're, you know, getting like a thousand views. Would it make YouTube more attractive if there was just, if they just in, encouraged a little more variety to stuff? I said, I, don't, I, don't I said there, it would be better if there if was two not. systems. There was one specifically for the kind of stuff like where you can get content out a lot. And then like an artsy side where it's like it focuses. So there's like two sides. There's the art side and then there's like the really? video side. You know what? They're going to go for the money. They're always going to go for the money. The gaming well, that's just what like I mean. is like taking over YouTube. But just like Twitch. Like Twitch well, that's, used that's... to also have Justin TV. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? They dropped Justin TV and then they just had no, Twitch. That's exactly what I mean. And then you couldn't even animate I, I on would, Twitch. I yeah. would say that, <clears throat> but at the point of me saying that, I would be on my LSD trip, like fucking like going through visions in my head. They're coming out of my head. I'm just like, wouldn't this be great? Oh man, let's go back in time where everything yeah. was good again. And the it's businesses like, it's not see the happen. numbers. They see numbers. They they and that's what they go for. They could not give a not rat's yet. ass how much time and effort and care system. you put into something. They want their money. The end. If anything, it's not even there's going to be a second system. It's that they're weeding out the bullshit. They're like, okay, you don't you don't make our requirements, you're gone. These guys make our requirements. That's why we get money. You guys fucking come in. You're like, it's like a kid. It's like um. It's like a thing where it's like uh, someone does a, a really good like they come in and they like have all this stuff to present and then they're like but they're um you know they're they're not as cool so it's like you're just like uh and then the other the like really cool kid who's like yeah just put this out here you know dude in five years but he's YouTube, rich so you want to be YouTube is friend. gonna be ninety nine percent. Um, game footage or gameplay stuff. It should be game cringe too. videos and. And that's really, I feel like 95% of it is going to be like... Uh, fucking compilations and video games. Yeah, footage. yeah, top tens and shit. News bloopers of a girl's tits hanging out with a 40 million views. I'm just saying. <laughs> I really think that, and it might even be I, pretty look, damn close I, to that I, I right think, now. I think the best bet for anybody who uses the internet pretty much is like a portfolio. I think, I don't think the internet's quite there yet. I, it, it's, it's like a, it's, it's, we're getting there. But I think at this point, you should use the internet as a stepping stone to come back when you have a steady job. Don't expect to make steady income off the internet. I'm saying that as somebody who, who did for a little bit, but you can't... You mean as an animator? As an, Well, I guess as anybody, dude, because vloggers who got their start on YouTube who became really rich. Like, Rayleigh Johnson, who did Equals 3, he quit his thing, but... <coughs> 
I, I can't imagine his career lasting much longer. No. Do, do you know anybody who's not like non animators that start out well? Person, personally, not, well? that well, or that that aren't doing well now. That like, just totally what, dropped. Oh, what the so book? Many. What the book was huge on YouTube. I trust Steve, Fred, all these guys. All these guys like scrape you, like ten thousand views. Yeah, yeah now. you see like someone really? like uh, yeah. Shane Dawson who was at the top of the charts, let and, me, he, and you see Shane Dawson, and he's he's let, he's grabbing any parody. Let, he me, can. let me po- let me let me pro- let me pose this question, which is actually harder. Mm. How many guys can you name who started online who are actually big now and doing what they wanted to do? And are in traditional media. Not still online. The only oh, one I can think of is Bo Burnham. Yeah. Bo Burnham is the only one I can think of. It, well, wait, what? That does what? That, that, that started off on annoys. YouTube and actually moved on to what he wanted to do in traditional media. So film... Justin TV. Bieber? Did he really start off or he was kind yeah, of... Yeah, he was on YouTube. Yeah, he was he a, kind of he found was a YouTube some, sensation. Like, um, the Annoying Orange is on television, isn't it? Got canceled. Got canceled. Oh. He gets 10,000 views now per video, pretty much. Dave, Ooh. Dave Bo. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> this is kind of a different note. I'm not going to keep going on this, but I'm going to say, like, I feel like unless... I'll, I'll, I'll say it like this. If YouTube went down, if you if you could find a job elsewhere, I think those are the people who will thrive. If you're an animator, you have a talent. You can do something. You can work in a studio. You can do whatever. But a lot of these guys who are vloggers who can only... Let's players, too. Let's, people who can only, only, only get an audience if they're constantly jump cutting, those guys can't go on to be actors. They they only work in that setting. And I feel like they, 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 they should recognize that they're on a fucking timer. The Epic Meal type guys, they got like a show, but they got canceled or something. Like, oh, really? All those guys get their five minutes fame, and maybe they do a couple of independent movies or something, and then they, they fade away. And then you see them in 10 years, it's like... Did they end up like fucking MC Hammer? It's just that, that kind of thing. When they hit it big for a little bit, they, they explode down. My, my biggest... A firestorm. My, my barometer for how I like to judge it is basically this. When I'm an old man, and I'm talking to like my little grandnephews or whatever, when I explain to them what I did during that period of time, that they would be like, oh, that's awesome. Like, I can show them what I did. Yeah. And, they would, and that they would appreciate it. That I can look back and be like, I did this thing. Yep. Rather than like I look back and I'm like I don't what was I doing? That was popular at the time or whatever you. Know? Yeah. So let's let's right. move on. Next right. question for Chris. Who's Where's that? Demon Vault? I don't know. All right. Next question. <laughs> next question. Oh yeah. By the way, that, that the previous question. Thank uh, Prophylaxis for that one. Yeah. Nice. Thank YouTube you for algorithm Prophylaxis. algorithm question. Um, I'll try to mix it up a bit here so they don't get um, get a lousy one. Mick, mm. anywhere in Malaysia you like? Any any good places to visit? Who asked me that? Emma, hey, I can get this. <laughs> Hold on, <laughs> I'm I'm in Zamaranan. I'm a Zamaranan I don't know. I don't know how to say it. <laughs> any places in Malaysia I like? Mick, what part of Malaysia did you stay in? I'm oh. from Malaysia and would really love to know your favorite spots back when you stayed there. Uh, well, I went to school in, in Ampang. I went to ISKO. And so I was in Pro- uh, Kuala Lumpur. Um, and then when I went back in 2005, I was staying in Penang. <clears throat> uh, I, I, I don't know. I just Where is Malaysia? Malaysia. Southeast Asia. So it's in Asia. It's above okay. Singapore. Okay, I didn't um, know. I was thinking it was somewhere in uh, North Korea, South Korea. I, you know, I I really like downtown K- KL, especially when I went back. I mean, when I was there as a kid, it was still kind of like grungy, um, open sewers and shit. But uh, and, and I do remember on my way to school, uh, there was this big like reservoir thing, and I remember a kid pulling up dead fish from the like this brown river thing and yeah. putting them in buckets and stuff yeah cool. but um i went back in 2005 and it was pristine it was beautiful i i, I love malaysia trista too asks what's the best advice you can give to a 17 year old who is about to turn 18 as a legal adult use condoms uh <laughs> do you have any bad? Do you have any bad news? Any stories about that? Just Meg? saying to use condoms. Uh, take All a, right. Uh, <laughs> uh, I have. I have advice. This guy's still in high school, I'm assuming. Yeah, I have um, advice. So um, I would say, yeah. none of your life matters. Everything before you doesn't matter. High school, you're gonna forget about within one year. Uh, have fun. Yeah, don't don't change anything you have going on right now. Like, continue to live off your parents and take, you know, take because I'm I sure I'm I'm assuming, but I'm assuming that like. They, he's they're on their parents like uh well they're 17 years old yeah like medical st- stuff so they can like go out and do like specific things that would help them in life on like, your 21st birthday don't drink 21 stuff. shots like an asshole i would say this if you're going to if you're going uh, just speaking from experience as friends of mine if you're going to school for like t- a teaching degree or education 
don't get caught underage drinking. That's that's bad. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say that every, fucks you for life. And you know, this is advice that I I don't even have for my own life. It's advice that I'm observing for new lives coming into this world. Mm-hmm. But everything is recorded, so don't just you know. Yeah. Look, I'm not saying you need to watch out for Big Brother, though you kind of do now. But just remember, like if you're gonna get a job, like if you want to be a lawyer one day, or you want to be anything where your credibility is is critical, it's on the line. Yeah, know. yeah just don't. Don't do that fucking skinny dipping yeah. uh, thing. Don't sleep. Don't, don't try do, to take advantage of that drunk girl at the party. Don't. Don't do what don't I did. Do, it. do you know what I did? Everything will come back. Okay. Everything is going to come back let, to let haunt you. Let me tell you, you something. Let me tell you something very important in life. Uh, yeah, have Corey. good credit because it affects you in the future. That's a real I can I can tell you right now That's if you true. think credit isn't is something Look. you should ignore. Uh, hold on, hold on. Okay. Let me just say from experience that I took credit for for granted i took so ages ago in 2009 i pulled out a loan because my mom needed it so i pulled out the loan because like she needed money at the time so i was like okay i'll pull out a loan she was paying for it but there was a time where she just couldn't pay for it so i was like okay i'll pay for it but this is when i didn't have a job i was kind of freelance animating for like youtube and shit and it was a bill that was i had paid off like half of it so i only owed 500 dollars. stupid enough i was just like they would send a thing. They'd be like, "We're," gonna, they, they'd be like, "You're you're dropping like you're you're gonna be in juvenile or not juvenile fugitive something for your like uh, loan score." And I was just like, "I was like, fucking do your worst. I'm not if I ain't paying you five hundred. I got shit to worry about. I got phone bills. I got rent." I'm like, suck my dick. I haven't been at school in fucking like four years. Kiss my ass. I was like, oh, super cool. I almost thought of smoking cigarettes. But what ended up fucking happening was I tried to get a place and um, I paid it off this, as of recently. Like this yeah, this is like a year ago. I paid it off. But here's the thing you can't just pay off credit. If you were dropping credit score, paying off something, no, is you like, have to work your score yeah, it's back like good, up. It's like, good job. You got credit. But here's the fucking kickoff. Like, here's where it fucks you. Once you're in the red, I don't know how you can get back from it. Because in order to get a credit card, you, you have to, to at least be you in have to pay your bills. You need, to, you, need to build, you need to, look, seriously, what, what I did, which was very stupid, which could have <laughs> built good credit, but I didn't do this. I paid for my car in full. Okay. That's a very, very bad idea. That does not build credit. No, you want to get a credit card you, and you want to pay it card, off every month. Exactly. Get a card, pay it off every month. You get a car and pay the bills every month. Yeah. They need to make using a credit card as easy as using a debit card to encourage you to use your credit card because I can just pay with my debit card and it's done with. With your credit card, you pay and oh, you have to remember to go into the account and pay, pay it off. You, you don't pay that or, bill, or, you get or, fucked or with Or you get interest. an angry phone call, angry phone call from yeah. the bank. Oh, you forgot to pay. I, I have the money to pay it off. I just <laughs> forgot. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. fuck this. I'm just using my debit card. So my, my credit probably isn't bad, but it probably isn't good either. It's just See, it's just zero. That's neutral. the thing for me. My credit is, is abysmal. And I, I'm not, I, right now I'm working on going to the credit bureau and getting my fucking birth certificate because I don't have that on me. Um, so it's it's a fucking huge hassle, but it's definitely something you should never overlook. Never overlook your credit. It is very important in life. If you want to get a fucking loan, if you want to get a fucking apartment, yeah. even if you have the money, because I have the money. I, I have first month's, last month's rent, and I have rent for days and fucking years. But the problem is, it doesn't matter. You need good credit in order to get an apartment. Another piece of advice, uh, turning 18, is to try to travel if you can. Um, travel cheap, try to find international friends that are around, you can crash on their pads or whatever, Mm -hmm. but this is a good time to go do it before you gotta hunker down and get a job and then you get roped to the ground. So while your chain is untethered, I'd say try to travel as much as you can. That's a really good advice. Yeah. I'm glad, I'm glad I got to do a little bit of that, even if it's just cross country. Just Uh, go on a trip, go see stuff, go places you never went before, and if you can, bring a friend. And if you can, go see friends um, and do all that before you come back and, and go to go get locked down. Yeah. And like I said, like avoid any like stupid felony shit. Like do what you're supposed to. Yeah, don't commit felonies. If you're, if you're doing something you're not supposed to, be smart about where you do it. Like if you're doing quote unquote drugs, yeah. you should do them in a place where you're not going to get caught. Yeah. Don't, don't do them at the club. Don't do them in your car. Don't do them and then go out on your way to the Look, club. Just don't yeah. be a fucking idiot. Yeah, no, yes. if you're not it's supposed simple. to do something, don't fucking do something. Or if you do do something, be smart about it. I have a pressing question. Yes. 
from self-proclaimed sir. Is okay. that his real name? Yes. Yes. This is his birth name. That's Mr. Self-proclaimed. He came out. What is the most the important part of a sandwich? <laughs> Go. The, Either the, I would I'm tied between meat, or the meat, the, cheese, the, meat or the cheese. I'll tell you what, cheese always hangs me up because I can never decide between sharp cheddar and provolone. I, I, I don't know about I've been you doing guys. Swiss lately. It's always good. Choice. The most important part of a sandwich. That's What's easy. What's a sandwich without the That's bread? That's easy. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Chris. Chris nailed. Chris nailed the coffin. He buried it and gave his more. <laughs> yeah, but just, yeah, but you, just, but just, just salad pull out, without the bread. Yeah, just exactly. Pull out meat and cheese and make little meat and cheese roll ups. It's, it's weird. Yeah. I don't. I don't like having ah. like cheese and meat. It's like you get the bread. You have that fucking like delicious sandwich. You're holding it. You can hold it. You don't just eat fucking like. You don't just mold it. I guess you could make a meat like a, a meat and cheese burrito. But I'm telling you. The bread sometimes makes a sandwich. Certain like, like ingredients, like certain flavors, Corey, go really good you go with bread. Go to Subway and get the herb and cheese bread. Yeah. <sighs> no, dude, um, it's good. dude, the fucking like special bread, like cheesy bread and stuff. Yeah, that one, herb and cheese. Oh my god. To Why? keep this concise, Hevni Krishna asks basically. Um, all right, if you were to just pitch a TV show again, like say tomorrow, what would you do differently from how you originally did it? Okay, so how we originally did it was we, we we went in fucking with our. Our body language was horrible for one thing. We were looking down at the floor. We were scared. You we were stuttering life, our words. You had your life replica like cut well, out. Well, we didn't do like full. Well, well, I guess we kind of did. We we kind of practiced the pitch, but we didn't do it enough. <laughs> but uh, I would say uh, I, we did a couple things wrong. You know, the more time goes on, the more I realize how we fucked up. I would say that actually the biggest thing is don't walk in there with the ego. Yeah. We walked in there with that. We went. We didn't. We didn't have we, an ego. We, I, let, me, let me clarify. An ego in the sense, not like I'm a big deal, but like in the sense where it's like you just weren't I'm not humble enough. Budge. Is that the problem? Was it? You were not humble. Oh yeah, no, 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 no. It, was, it wasn't that. I'd be mean, like in the we, sense where we were being too uh, pr- like pride, full of pride. Okay. No, there wasn't even that. Yeah, Unwilling it was just, to it was just, negotiate yeah, things. Exactly. But if you walk into a place, they go, well, "Fuck you, get out." We yeah. have to, like if you're gonna have to fucking budge on something. Look, the first it's, time I would was... say pick what the go. Okay, I'm sticking to this. Everything else I can kind of talk well, to. But about. but no, this is why we didn't budge. They were like, okay, we've already got a show called like uh, Hell Faggot, whatever. And they were like, like, we need Mr. to change. Pickles, and it was, yeah, uh, they were like, we want you to change the name of Hellbenders. We were like, no. And they were like, fine, whatever. Is it? Yeah, it's just like, oh, okay. You know what? If we went back now, we'd be like, yeah, let's just call it the Gooseberry Brothers. It's a stupid. It's, <laughs> a, it's a stupid title. But I would just say, be willing to negotiate. Don't walk in with it. I don't, when I say ego, I don't mean in the sense where it's like, oh, I'm a big deal. You know, you know who I am. I mean in the sense where it's like, look, let me just do my idea. Because you're going to have every guys, show on TV has fucking been negotiated. Or realistic. All we saw it was originally going to be about fucking actors in Hollywood. But they did the network because I think that's a bad idea. Make them, make them guys in Philadelphia. Like, you have to. I think it's good to have a certain amount of pride in terms of. Like that you're there's, proud of what you are bringing to the table, but I understand what you're saying. There, there's a level. I'm not saying be their bitch, but I'm also saying don't sit there and go. I'm not gonna budge. You sure. have to be willing to fucking talk because right. they're not gonna. They're just not gonna work with you. I guess when you, if you were doing your pitch, if I could say anything, you walk in and you just be humble to anything they sort we, of say. We, 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 were, we were humble. Chris and I, we, we weren't like, hey, look at me. Was, no, no, I'm not we saying. No, no, I, I know you mean, but like they're. I, you definitely have to say, okay, I'll, I'll work with you on this, I'll work with you on that. Mm-hmm. Here's there, a question. There's, there's a healthy balance. What's your question? Sorry, were we... Were we no, go for it. All done. right, um... Well, this kind of ties into something earlier. Zach, Zach had a little back and forth with a mongoloid on YouTube about uh, some guy accused him of selling out. All of us. And uh, this question... Yeah, I know. This, this, All of this, us? Uh-huh. This Especially you, Mick. pseudo-intellectual cunt that plays the guitar and gets like three views per video. <laughs> but anyway... Oh a fucking failure that will be forgotten by the annals of history. But you know anyway, who you next are, question. You yeah, you know who you are. <laughs> Holy shit. Next question. Yeah, this guy said, Roasted Six asks, how would you guys define selling out? Giving you know, up on your beliefs to make money. It's very, very, he just got it. Doing something, something you would not normally do in exchange for money. That's it. That's it. The end. Next question. Okay. <laughs> that is question. pretty. Selling that is t-shirts, pretty like cut dry, as simple as it selling gets. Okay. Selling your work. A OK. Selling merchandise. Yeah. Charging for your work. That's something. All five. Going that's against something your people. People. That's something people. And that's funny. That's funny because that's something people think. Like to go more. Like people think like oh. 
You're selling your own merchandise, you fucking sell out. They, they don't understand the concept that you're making making money off your own stuff. It's, it's not and selling And people are out. giving it their own money for it. Yeah, people, it's their choice. Yeah, it, it's like you're not you're not selling like real like it's not like fucking like a uh, Dragon Ball P on Doritos cups and shit. Like, it's, not, it's not that. <laughs> I do that too. I wouldn't fucking give a shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but Who cares? I mean, like, but you would you would endorse Doritos. You but I if fucking I, like if, Doritos. If I liked the product, I would do exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah, I, I would genuinely like. I would. I would you're not no, but you're not going to do something like. You're not gonna endorse. Look, you, no, you're not gonna endorse Ben Gay if or Radio something. Radio Shack came like, up to me and said, "Look, I want to put Goku's <laughs> fucking retired face on our window." I'd say, "Fuck you, Radio Shack. Yeah. You're this shitty store. I'm glad you're dying." You what if they shit. wanted to put it on like their Halloween RC cars? I would My, say, "Go away. You're a bad store. Stop <laughs> asking me a million you, questions when I'm trying to buy something." You know when you're you know when you're selling out because you can feel yeah. it in your bones. If you're doing it solely, if you know that you would not ever even consider doing it until they gave you the price tag, yeah. then there's a very good chance it's selling. If I don't even care, like I don't, I, I, the way I see it is, if you're making something pure that you like, let's say a video game or a yes. movie, and if somebody comes along and says, well, you know, we just want to sell toys of this, as long as like the core it's product fine. is something yeah. pure that you like, look, yeah, and they're just offering you a bunch of money to sell a bunch of shit, kids will buy any, like, Another thing it doesn't is, matter. you know, product placement in movies. Yeah. If the product placement He's doesn't dead. affect your immersion, then it's not that selling out. That is incredibly out. important. Like when growing up, when you watch so many comedy movies, you don't realize the subtlety of the product placement because it's not the main focus. The main focus is the joke. That's They're tough just though because stuff. it's like almost now people are almost on the lookout for it. Anytime they see anything with a name on it, they're like, oh, that's yeah. But also but sometimes again, there's like fake also, brands, and you're like, that's stupid. Yeah. yeah. Then again, there's also like it, it's not it, yeah, people hate, are looking for it, but it's also also, like how much in, it's like what Chris said. How much in your face is it? Like I don't you're even, shameless. I, like, I hate when I, when I see movies. It's like let's go to Blink the Lawn. Like, Trans- yeah. yeah, yeah. Transformers Four was fucking obnoxious. Yeah, it was the, obnoxious. There was a scene it was terrible. where the fucking the dude crashes his spaceship. The fucking blue and Budweiser. And he comes out, he scene. crashes into like like a fucking Budweiser thing. He comes <laughs> out, he comes out, he cracks it. And it's like ah, and he drinks yeah. it. Yeah. Yep, I started laughing. Okay, World War Z, Brad Dude. Pitt gets chased by zombies and he locks him behind a door and he walks over to a pristine Pepsi machine and he <laughs> perfect, takes one out perfect. and drinks it. And, and, and the background it. is like this disgusting <laughs> orange background, so the red this is definitely the sticks out. They have pristine Pepsi can still somehow. I don't know if anybody's seen it, but if, if, if any of you want to like look up, there's a clip on YouTube of a guy. What sh- what show is that from? It was from one of the. It was like from Hawaii Five O, where the guys eating oh, the subway, subway sandwiches. Oh god, like, I, I saw that. that. The subway he, yeah, yeah, the guy just sitting there. Oh, I love the fucking it, camera. Keeps it's like an, it literally. Is, it's, what is it? It's like a fucking detective thing, and he's like, "Hey, what are you eating?" He's like, "Oh, I'm just, I'm just eating this chicken sandwich." It's really good. You can it's get it for six fifty five. I love the music. Yeah, like, yeah. And then the girl, the girl's like, "Well, really? How you know? Yeah, how many calories that?" But he's explaining. He's like. It's not what you think. You can actually get a deal right now. If you can cut the scene out, if you can cut the scene out and double it as the actual ad, <laughs> that's when you know it's product placement. Like the thing with World War Z and the Pepsi thing. Yeah. That could easily be a commercial. It probably was. Snip it out and put it right there. Yeah. Do the it. guy had like fucking like six sub like <laughs> subway sandwich. It wasn't just There's one. It was like six of them. Like he was doing a fucking taste test. They took they took the fattest guy on the show. He's like 800 pounds, and he's talking about how healthy. These subway sandwiches what, what, One kind of product placement I don't like is when they get like Shrek and he's like, oh, McDonald's milkshakes. It's like, you're ruining the immersion of that. Oh yeah, forever. absolutely. You don't want like Shrek going in and like- You tell me you don't like the Shrek for what's the shamrock shake? Yeah. No, I hate that. <laughs> because it's like, why does he have McDonald's in this world? It's fucking fairy tale land. It's bullshit. It's true, it, it doesn't make sense. Chris, I hate to tell you, but Shrek is a real character. He is! <laughs> but you have to remember that funny joke. I'm making waffles. Waffles isn't in fantasy. I'm making waffles is, is man-made. It's not fantasy made. Holy fuck! The immersion is gone. I know. When he's like, I'm making waffles, and then he said garlic. He should have said, I'm making old potatoes mashed into a pan. Yeah, he's like, fuck I'm you. making swamp <laughs> swamp grass soup. If I was Shrek, I would have killed Donkey. Yeah, next question. <laughs> this is important. We're talking about product placement. Go for it. Go. Wait, Jeff. Let me ask you something. What? Um, out of all the recent movies you've seen, yeah. uh, that aren't shitty garbage, and not ho- hot fucking sewage like Transformers and yeah, these yeah, fucking yeah. like travesties, yeah. a movie you really liked where it broke the immersion because it had a product placement that just felt really out of place at the time. Uh, that, that, can, sorry, I know you have the. Go answer. ahead. No, can you name some? Just, yeah, movies? well, I just watched Age of Ultron, mm-hmm. and it, look, I. 
it wasn't crazy bad. I mean, they'd done it before, didn't they? With like Burger King or something. He's like, I'm gonna need a Burger King burger, like Tony Stark. Oh no, that was an Iron Man movie. Mm. Remember he needed a, he, when they found him, that I, I, in I the don't desert. mind that. I don't think, I think yeah, 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 that's, that's fine. What it was. Like, yeah, yeah. I that's what he would do. Too, if I was in the fucking desert. So that didn't take me out, but it's weird because that didn't take me out, Yeah. but that was clearly product placement, but that did not take me out. It seemed like a very Tony Stark thing to do. Yeah. But at the end of Age of Ultron, no spoilers, don't worry, um, Scarlet gets a, a Skype message. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And, and it's so weird because that sound and and I get it's in know, Birdman too. Is yeah. it? Oh yeah, yeah. In fact, when we were watching that, we all checked your Skype. Yeah, no, that. that's yeah. the thing. It's like, it, and even that is so subtle. And it's you know whatever, whether it's product placement or not, it doesn't really matter. And, and it shouldn't be because technically it's just Skype. You know what? We all use it. And yeah. guess what? That they're using it too. It humanizes them. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, as soon as I heard that Skype sound, I was just like, Avengers don't need to use Skype. Yeah, I just rolled my fucking eyes like. Yeah. Uh. Dude, I, I'll tell you the last one that happens when I saw. Uh, What's Did that? Use, was, here, go ahead. Skyfall. Yeah. There's a part where the hacker like uploads a video to YouTube and puts it on that list. Movie and I was is like, fucking trash. Yeah, the hacker's like, he goes on YouTube and it's like, can, can, can I say something? He's a hacker, dude. I, I really, I really hate that fucking cliche of somebody uploading something to a YouTube type thing. Oh, and I then it gets a bunch of views. I love that part of the movie. movie. I fucking hate the fucking, that cliche. That fucking lady M, she's like. We're ruined, and it has like nine views. It's like, yeah, yeah you're really not. <laughs> just like, delete it. Because you know, it's like, if it's like that, it's like these videos get like obnoxiously like high views. Yeah, 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 show yeah, YouTube in a movie. That happened in what? Kick ass? Yeah. yeah. Every single movie. I hate oh, that, that show is YouTube. It always has like Anything? 50 million yeah, views it, and like four likes. It's, it's like, not, what? Yeah, it's just not go even, through the effort, you fucking idiot. It's not even a realistic number. It's just like, yeah, exactly. It's like, fucking. It's look, movies. It's always like one tenth the likes of the views. Just fucking learn that. Thank you. Amen. How do you guys feel about AI technology? Uh, it's creepy. Jeff, I'm gonna build a robot version of you and fuck it so it's not gay because it's not you. <laughs> uh, good. Next question. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Would it be. Uh, sorry, 404 Life Not Found asked that. Alright, next question. Ari Ledzima asks. Would you be okay with making a sleepy cast animated, but instead of animation, actors representing your story? That'd be awesome. That'd be yes. cool. <laughs> yes. Be yes. Good. And to really play off our stereotypes. Uh, specifically, Ryan Gosling, um, uh, Tom Hanks for Jeff, John Oliver. You have to get John Oliver. I will not <laughs> sign on to this fucking deal without John Oliver. Uh, I you? want Channing you know, Tatum. CG, Chan- CG, Chris, Tatum. though. I know. I yeah. always do this thing where I snap my, snap my fingers and violently Corey, point at be, somebody. You should be played by that guy from Jurassic Park who yeah, drops the canister Oliver. down the hill. Do you, do, yeah. you know what, do you know what I want to do? <laughs> I want to walk on set with John Oliver. Wait, do you mean? And like I want to act like I don't know where I am. Like, hold on, hold on. Late night. Is that? That's cool. I want to walk on stage with John Oliver when he's doing his comedy bit and or his like, UK comedy bit. And I want to walk on, act like I don't know where I am, and then hide my face. So I'm wearing like my, I'm wearing like one of those like hoodies and stuff. And then when he comes so over, when he comes over, I want to lift it up and be like, Dad. Dad? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I want to be like, Dad. Corey, have you a better idea? Corey, find a big, like, huge, like, wicker basket, like a massive wicker basket, and then go to his doorstep and, like, lay on a blanket and go, hey, hey, hey. Hey, Mick. the doorbell, wait for We should make a video called John Oliver Makes Out with Ryan Gosling and wait. just have you guys kiss. No, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, okay. I, no, I don't want to be Ryan Gosling, okay? <laughs> I want Ryan Gosling to fuck a girl, and I want Owen Wilson to fuck another girl. Yeah. And one of them have a baby boy, and one of them have a baby girl, and watch them grow, and then they fuck, and I want to be played by that kid. Got it. <laughs> Okay. Owen Wilson? Owen Wilson, Ryan Gosling. What, why Owen Wilson? Because I want to have well, Why don't you watch. just cut to the chase? Why don't you just have Ryan Gosling fuck Owen Wilson and then Because they can't conceive. Maybe. Maybe, baby. Okay. I want... <laughs> if, 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 someone plays, uh, baby. if someone plays John Oliver, I want him to play if a deaf person. If Owen Wilson person. got pregnant with a baby, I'd punch him in the face. <laughs> I want a deaf person to voice dub John Oliver. <laughs> why? why? My name is Corey. Why? Why, Corey? <laughs> Huh? Stop smiling like a funny. chimpanzee, you fucking idiot. Because <laughs> it would be funny. I want John Oliver to be talking normally and be like, I'm qualified. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Let's get out of here, dude. What a day. Right. Um, fast you question. cannot deny Easy that question. would it be funny. John Oliver talking Corey, normally with a deaf person. Oh, Jaxosaurus <laughs> asks, what's your ideal coffee like? Oh. Iced, extra sugar, etc. Very, very dark coffee with some French Law cream. Easy. That's it. One big strawberry. Easy. I get <laughs> yeah, it. I get it all the time. Yeah. Just 
like if I if I if I make it at like a on a brewer, yeah, normal, just cook it up, make it, and then drink it. But if I go order it at a place, black? if I go to Dunkin's, yeah, yeah black. You, but if, you drink black coffee? Yeah, normally. But if I go to something like Dunkin's, there's a specific thing I want. I want turbo. I want a smidgen of cream <laughs> and no sugar, and either large or extra large. But I don't want extra large anymore. Because I mean, I fucking ranted about why I don't want extra large. Right. And you know what? It's true. Check because out the cartoon with a uh, Corey random out coffee. Yeah, yeah. So I ordered an extra that's large. That's a good sleepy animated. Yeah. Yeah. Black. Yeah, I like it. Black, thick, rich sludge. I'm not gonna make a joke here, so stop it, Mick. Um, and uh, if I do go to Starbucks, if I have to, I will generally always order a clover press. Uh, it's a reverse French press, apparently, or something. It has very low acidity, mm -hmm. um, but it, and it's a little bit more expensive, but it, and it takes a while for them to make, but it's fucking tasty. I'm All a right. fan of cappuccino with a little bit of uh, cream, and that's it. All right. Yeah. You just can't have right. too much if cream it's cheap, If it's cheap coffee, I will add sugar. It cheapens the value yeah, If I go to like a diner or something, I'll have like cream and sugar, but I like a big, fat coffee cup. Shekelstein oh. asks... Sorry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who came up with the idea of all living in the same place and how were you all convinced to live there? What idea? That just like happened over well, like time. We were all friends. You, you want to live at your friends, I mean, don't you? I thought he lived here. Newgrounds is in the area. I moved here. Stamper was already working at Newgrounds. This, this wasn't yeah. like, this wasn't like A fucking plan. like the good old boys where we all planned this when we were younger. <laughs> this was just something that happened. It was just a series of events. I knew well, Chris. I know how it happened. I knew Stamper. I just moved in with Stamper when Hans was there. Yeah. And then so Chris came. Who, in what order did everybody there, wait, move in? I was there before you. Chris was there before me. Stamper I, grabbed the, the house. It was me, Stamper, and Mike, I think. And Joy, I think. Yeah. Okay. Wait, no, she wasn't Joy. No, no, it's Joy like, it's like if you have a big boot on and you step in a pile of shit yeah. and then you try to rub the shit off in the grass, you know what happens? It collects a bunch of grass. So essentially, just more people just gathered like yeah. a like a boulder, at like a like a snow boulder. Yeah, and I think what it was, I think more or less what it was, it was one of these things. It was kind of a snowball effect. Yeah. What basically happened was what I remember. This is, I don't know if this is, but this is just from my point of view. When I came, Chris was staying with Hans, and it was Hans, you, and Stamper and Mick. That's what it was. It what wasn't me? Huh? No, to Chris, it was Hans, Stamper, Mick. I wasn't here. My, Mike. Mike, yeah. Oh. Sorry, I don't know why I said that twice. Sorry. But yeah, and then Mike left, and Zach had already been here. Zach, I wanted Zach to come because, like, we all, like, you could work with Chris, uh -huh. and it was just way easier for you to just come and, and live here. So then Chris. I mean, there was, there was points where I'd come, like, I'd visit yeah. here for like four months at a time, pretty much. Yeah, and Jeff has always been next door neighbors to that house. And then you Shad came. Free move. I'm always around. He's always around. And then I Shad would. and Lewis moved in. Yeah, and then Shad came. Shad came where he was looking for a place, and I'm like, you should totally come here. And he was like, yeah, okay. Yeah. And I was like, oh, all right. I didn't know if he would because it was kind of like. That's what happened with Stamp for me. He just offered out of nowhere, and I was like, yeah. okay, cool. But it was I'll, cool I'll, because. I'll, I'll admit, I, I thought Shad man was going to be a total psycho. I, thought, I was no, like, no. I was like, are but you really going to let him move in here? No, it's one of those things. But he ended up being like the nicest guy ever. No, here, it's, it's that it's that rule where it's like the people who draw the most vile or fucked up stuff are the most coolest people you'll meet. Yeah, and the people who draw the most baby shit are yeah, the most are the fucking creepiest, disgusting. Yeah, the like fucking like introverse autist. <laughs> <laughs> no offense. They, they, they like, they're the kind of people who like fucking, yeah. Like they're they, the like, people they like step on cat heads and have people spit on them for fun. For sexual <laughs> yeah. gratification. Specifically, right. the door of the explorer. Any person, what I'm basically saying is anyone who's ever made friendly family stuff, no. It's uh, like, on the internet, at least. That, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, it, no, it, it's not that kind of stuff. It's like that awkward campiness where those jokes are just like, uh-huh, mm, I'm not a 12-year-old, so I don't think it's funny. But then that's not always true. You kind of got to pick and choose. But for the most part, I don't think it's like a, it's just, I guess it's a cognitive bias, but it's a bias I've come to with, sure. like understand I'm, over experience. I'm going to just choose to believe everybody who isn't offensive on the internet is a pedophile. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, just play it that way. That. William's they always wanted, asks. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. People always at people always say back in my day or people always say back in the day everything was always better. Yeah. Do you guys think anything has gotten better or are you all cynical? Yes. Look, if you're retarded enough to say that things were better twenty years ago, we had more stuff. You're an idiot. No, things have absolutely gotten better. Anyone who says, "Oh, it used to be so much easier back then," well, technology some, some is better. Get worse. Like, like, no, some things get worse. Are worse. <laughs> like the whole gaming industry is way worse than it used but my, to be. My point is now you you have every other good game from the other decades plus new. Games. Yeah, no, but what I'm saying is like you have 
My point is, it makes no sense. Unless the country that you lived in fell into a fucking... I would your say... Economy, your whole thing collapsed. No, I, know I would saying. say it revolves around can... certain things. For you instance... Have, you have every movie, every piece of music, every yeah, video game what from I'm every saying decade. Is that there was, We're talking there was now, no not decade then, prior. Than making games talking and, now. Movies. I would say definitely some things are cut and dry, but I would say that a lot of things most are things much are easier. Yeah, most things are definitely I'll also, better. I'll like also phones. Say too, phones are way easier I'll now, but then too. there's like a payoff where you don't have as long as charging. You recall the things that were great back then? You're recalling the best stuff. There was still fucking garbage. No, back then. yeah, that's like, true. Too. Still, like the amount of good movies that still come out are probably pretty consistent. Like. Play the Apes. Yeah, no, that's also true. I also feel like it's kind of like, again, I'm using the term, but it's also like a bias because it's like things, it was like new ideas at the time. Like they hadn't really been done before. Yeah. It was kind of like a that's new thing. That's also true too. Yeah. And then like since, it's like the bar has been so high for video games, even though they, it really shouldn't be, but there's just like, invisible bar that no one really talks about but then it's like it actually does come up yeah. where it's like games have advanced so far that they have this huge regiment where you need like amazing graphics yeah. you need like realistic like animation and you need just like a, yeah. a fucking intense engine yeah, yeah. that can the like thing is, you know, I, I, it's, it's not that I deny it I just think the numbers are really exaggerated no 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 but also like uh, when, when a new game comes <laughs> <laughs> You're Fuck a little you, shit. Dude. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> the fucking when when a new game comes out, right? Because it's a new game, you have to put all this effort into photo. Like, quit doing your best troll face. I'm not impressed. <laughs> Okay, go on, Chris. Are we done here? <laughs> you were not done here. Stop fucking contorting your face, dude. I don't. I don't think I ever think back about like. I, wait, know, I wasn't. Wait, no, Chris. Chris had wanted, something to say. I wanted to say, but we can't now though. He's gonna keep laughing every time we're gonna start talking. Gonna start it's gonna happen. Right. Good. Go ahead, Chris. Look at this little troll. <laughs> Chris, go ahead. <laughs> fucking what I'm trying to say here. <laughs> It's fucking when a game comes out now, the photorealistic graphics take a lot of time to make, right? Oh yeah. And and the photorealistic graphics and production values and the, the sound design, all this stuff, masks a badly designed game uh -huh. way like yeah, a that, lot. So all these games like are designed very poorly, but people don't seem to notice because they don't really know what they're getting into. Well, yeah. What, what did you think would happen when you play land? I, I guess it's also and I guess that kinda cuts into something I, I kinda wanted to talk about. Yeah is like this is something i want to talk to you jeff it's kind of like an idea i guess i'm going to segue into it is um since we have all these cut and dry stuff where it's like oh we get the same you know i'm someone who hasn't really gotten into the series but oh call of duty it's all the same we get the same gray matter the same boring fucking like cut and shooter oh i duck i shoot i get hit once i'm dead on the ground and then mm. someone comes over and stabs me it's like you get that <clears throat> i am completely biased when i say this but it's like people feel that we live in this gray area where it's like, oh, everything's so real. I remember when it was just fucking four polygons and it, I, we, had, we had fun. And it's like now things come out and they bring back the stuff that we remember. And it's kind of like it makes you wonder, like it's like a game comes out. Like, for instance, the Banjo-Kazooie guys are coming out and they're making a new Banjo-Kazooie game. Which I'm completely for. I think it's fucking amazing. But I also have doubts that it's like it's been too long. Stuff has come this way. And it's like I don't necessarily want the same Banjo-Kazooie experience. Well, also, did, did the guy who did Mega Man, did he do a Kickstarter game and it threw that horror? No, it was the fucking, was like, the executive game. producer who did it. It wasn't even the real Mega Man guy. But I think what it that, comes... Like, did he get like two million dollars? Yeah, he got yeah. a bunch of money. What it comes down to is I feel like nostalgia glasses fog a lot of peop people's like memory of what they remember a game used to be. And and it's like movies too. Like people announced Zoolander 2 and I fucking rolled my eyes. I'm like, yeah, okay, you're going to get the same enjoyment you got from Zoolander 2. And then like I, I thought Dumb and Dumber was going to be trash. I was right. The sequel's awful. But it's like... What I'm basically saying is I feel like people w want the old stuff because it was more simpler back then, but like, you know, like... It's Jeff, nostalgia. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of nostalgia clouding. <clears throat> Jeff, you, you, there's some, you, something about like Symphony of the Night or something. Yeah, they released, <coughs> the, 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 the original programmer uh, cre slash co-creator of the Symphony of the Night, he released a Kickstarter today. Oh. oh. Um, what day is today? The 5, five good, 11? Did, should I bring up, do you remember, do you guys know what the name of it is? I didn't well, even Symphony know about of the this. Night 2, the Symphony. It's game it's, designers kickstarting games, man. Man, hold on. I gotta I gotta talk about this for a second. Shovel Knight was Kickstarter. Okay, that's fine. That that one gets a pass. No, it's I like I, no, no, one. I, no I, I don't mean indie, I mean actual game designers like yeah. in from the past doing it. You know what it comes down to? It's like, oh, Oh, that one guy did like core art design for it's gonna be the best game. But he did, he wasn't the <clears> one who animated it. He wasn't the one games who did the music. Are, are a 
collaborative Collective, effort. Yeah. Exactly. It's but like, that's the like, thing. Yeah, I, I was always like the costume designer for, for Robocop. It's like, cool. Yeah. Right. You weren't the writer, though. You no, exactly. Comic. And yeah. that's what people don't seem to realize. It's like, but they see that. They're like, you, perhaps you didn't know, this guy was the makeup designer for one of the new Marvel movies. And it's just like, and he's doing a Kickstarter for a, a fucking Marvel, like, like their, its own, like, Marvel breakaway, like, its own superhero story. Right. And he didn't make up for it. But it's like, okay, okay. But it's like, you, you're you not going to get the same, like, validity. Oh, my God. It's so already like, funny. Yeah, yeah. Here's the thing. So games are like... That's this, what I'm talking about. Games are a team effort, right? It was just a programmer. Right? It didn't even fight. What? It's like... Yeah, all right. Hold on. <laughs> so, <laughs> the Castlevania Symphony of the Night, this game is called Blunt's Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. Terrible. It looks exact. It has. It's. It's basically a carbon copy of Castlevania. The main character is the same color scheme as uh, Alucard from from Symphony of the Night. Yeah. Um, they were asking for I half a the mil, and they or they're already up to a mil. Do you know that? You know, yeah, that's they're something? up to half a million, and, and one day they're up to a million, nearly a million now in one day. They pitched this thing with one bad Photoshop screen, one bad. Uh, mocked up screenshot, and well, that's they just it. Took a still from Symphony of the Night. There was one guy. <laughs> it's like not, colored it's over it's just one drawing. There was one guy called Paper Bat, who's a YouTuber, who did a Kickstarter for a game called Project Roxavia, and he all he did was release concept art. He took he got like thirteen thousand dollars and ran with the money. He ran with it. Mm-hmm. Never fucking said a word about well, it. Then he did, then he's he, like a let's player. Yeah, and then he did. He's did. I think he's doing another uh, Kickstarter for the, for a different game. And he never yeah, finished yeah. the first one. No, did, did not even did a finish. But just ignored it. Pretty but much. Jeff, yeah. do you do you see what I mean? Like people latch onto that. They're like, oh, this guy coded. Oh, there's this These design looks like the original want, thing. They badly. I, I understand their. No, they're, yeah, I understand they, what they want, but it's like looking at. It's like the, the the you you look at this and you just question everything about it almost. You, you know, like the, the one piece of concept art. There's one there's one enemy design which is basically a lion head with like five legs sticking out of it. I you're think like, this really? you're going to make a Kickstarter for a game at least have a fucking playable demo I, or something. Or this, a is, this is going to be. I, I don't want to sound <laughs> what like. What the fuck is that? Show me. I don't want to sound rude. What the fuck is that? <laughs> What the fuck is this? Is, this, this is what they're selling the game with. So I don't want to sound rude, but I feel like this okay. is going to be the Mighty Number no. Nine effect. Yeah, it is. Where they they have stuff because let me tell you okay. something. Mighty Number no. Nine had really awesome looking concept art of what potentially it was going to be, but when it was fucking released, it was like it looks like this like no, awful cut you know face mobile game. game. So what, what happened? What was the end result of this? Uh, disaster. Nope. And it looks nothing Everybody's like the original. They're concept. not getting the game that they paid for. Yeah, I I. Uh... Uh, two, two things I want to say. I have only ever donated to two Kickstarter things. One was, I can't remember one of them. The second one was, I think, a documentary thing called, like, Fight for Space or Flight for Space. I donated to that one. Yeah, you donated that one too. What the fuck? That was, like, three years ago, dude. I think the, I think the thing is, that guy, at least there's still proof he's working on it. He, he so. always, he always, I always get emails from that where it's like, hey, it's, but I'm still like, man, that was like three years ago. But then he, then he made a second Kickstarter. And I was like, I'm not Oh, uh, for the more money? Yeah, yeah I, I was like, I dude, dude I was like, that. dude. I really appreciate the cause, and I really appreciate all the people you have on, but at some point, you just need to it's, fucking it's, it I feel like the hardest thing is these people just don't understand. They, every time they try to set a budget, it should be like quadruple what I they was, thought it was. Exactly, should be. because what happens, like with that guy, he was he's not being disingenuous. He's not running no. the money, but what happened was he was being too humble and asked for like half of what he needed. So pretty much you cite, you fuck with the audience, and then you don't get to do it, and you kind of waste their money. Maybe you get a boost to do like half what you need to do, but it just kind of fucks everybody. Even but, with this Castlevania game, it's like if, if they would have just hit their half a million dollar budget, did, there's no Tim way they would have been able to finish like it. A, like four million. Yeah, and he was still like, I can't finish it. Sorry. No. Yeah. He, you know what happened was, but the budget was it was, like it was poor dollars. budget management, and he didn't. But, was he, he asked, he asked for, like, for more money because he couldn't like manage the fucking? What was he originally properly. asking for? I think it was something like 200, 300, 400, maybe, yeah, 400, maybe 200, maybe 240,000, I believe. It was a couple hundred thousand at the point. Yeah. He got four billion dollars and was like, yeah, sorry, I can't do it. But you know, someone like, uh, <laughs> I guess it's weird because like, you know, those guys, um, uh, they make great games way forward. Yeah. <laughs> they did that thing for, uh, Shantae and that game, like, you know. It, it you know they're way forward. They made good games in the past. Very simplistic. Like their girls are cute, and they make these games. And it's like, again, like um, 
schoolgirls. They they had a goal, but they yeah. they were very community oriented, which is something not a lot of Kickstarters can do. But they were already like in the community, so they would reveal stuff. They had artists who worked behind the scenes who would like show off secret screenshots, and it was just very like fun on its production. The, the reason Skullgirls got done is because the programmer was very pa- very very passionate yeah. about fighting games. He's he knew what he wanted. Committed. He knew how to make it. That's and they nice. hired talented, they talented, talented animators, and they had a they had a proper budget. It's pretty fucked up when but. people do a Kickstarter and then you change things after you get money. Like I know there there was a series called like a bait uh, and switch. There was a series called Bead Puppy Cat. Yeah, and they did a pilot, and then, then they did a Kickstarter for a series, and they changed the character designs for no reason. Yeah, no, that's something... For no reason. It was a completely different art style. Like, it wasn't drastically different, but like, the character designs were changed, and the art style was different. And people didn't give money to that art style, they gave it to the other one. Yeah, I think and one fucking of the... fucking 90% of the comments were like, this is what happened to the art style I paid for. I that's, don't, don't want to see this. Dude, that's it. That's the Mighty Number no. 9 effect. It's yeah. the dis- disingenuous. Is that the word? Yep. Disingenuous? Just not, yeah, not being... Genuine, yeah, yeah that, and that's what it is. They weren't being genuine, and when they released the product, it was nothing like they wanted. It was this like fucking. You don't get to change something ass. once you get the money. You can change as much as you want before you get the money, but after that, you're fucking locked in. All right, guys, listen. We got a lot Ooh. more questions. <laughs> Shut up! Shut up! We got a lot more. Okay. Lightning round. <laughs> yeah. No! All right, guys. We got a lot. We got a lot more questions to get through here, but uh, I want to make sure. <laughs> Fuck. Go. All right, guys, it's getting a little bit late here, but we want to make sure we get through as many questions as we can, all right? So we're going to hit up a little bit of a lightning round. All right. <laughs> all right, you guys ready? Yes. Right, here are the rules. Here are the rules. Answer lots of questions. Fuck your big. tangents. Let's go. Yeah, no tangents. Go. All right, here we go. Big dick, big tits, go. Um, uh, Af- no. Af- Aphroditus. Asks, dum, if dum, any of dum, you had dum, children, dum, how, dum, when, dum, when you expose dum, them to the internet? I'd whack them! I'd whack them! I'd whack them again! Fuck kids! Yeah, no kids. No, not no, literally. I'm not interested. <clears throat> um, not literally. Dum, dum, yeah, kids. Dum, unless they're asking dum, for it. Unless they're showing their ass. Introduce them to the internet when they're 14. Go next. All right, next. When they're a teenager. There you go. That's the internet. All right, here we go. Stop it! Shut up! Corey. Waff... 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 Waft I'm making my own boss. stroke. Stop. <laughs> Zach and Chris are credited in the latest JonTron episode, the Starcade one. Could you tell us what you did? We help write it next. We help write it. Yep. Who Perfect. Cares? Uh, Matt. All right, here we go. Smat Chain asks, "Have you ever gotten in an argument with a feminist or somebody who was obviously narrow-minded in real life?" Yes, all, all the time, time on fucking Twitter Go every to day. My Twitter. All, all the fucking time, time every easy. day. Jeff has had some fun too with the with the. Images. Just turn on your computer. Everybody, Jeff is a feminist. Do not offend next. All right, here we go. <laughs> We've got um, Snid Gurdon uh, asks, Ew. What idea, notion do you find absolutely terrifying? Zach's I'm face? Snid oh Just God. kidding. Zach's ass. Wait, um, what? T-800s. Next question. T-H- <laughs> what do you find absolutely uh, harf, uh, uh, terrifying? Meeting my dad again for 5,000. Cool. Translucent okay. fingers. <laughs> All right, here we go. This is from uh, Fiesto. What is your quote unquote comfort zone? Location, food, weather, etc. What makes you McDonald's. most at ease? See, see, the big plastic raw McDonald's laughing at me. It makes me happy. Wawa? Okay, Wawa, and sitting in a bathtub. I sitting like sleeping. In your Watching bed? Watching Jeff sleep. Watching Chris take a bath. Go. I like lying in bed pretending. A small cozy room that's a little lukewarm. Anymore. What's your comfort zone? Sitting in a beanbag. A s- bathtub. Yeah, a small cozy room that's a little lukewarm. I like laying in a coffin across <laughs> a the arms room, of the table. Room. I like being in a hot, fucking muggy office yeah, with like my best pals a, recording the I podcast. I like being in a sweaty steam room. <laughs> no, my, I mean the shower is definitely one, but I mean, <laughs> Fuck you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the Bothering <laughs> asks, who's your favorite comedian at the moment? Norm McDonald. Adam Sandler. Peter Griffin. <laughs> Stick up, oh, he's a baby, oh, he's funny. Oh, fucking He's so smart, baby. Oh. My favorite comedian. You guys make me laugh. How about that? He's a smart baby, oh. <laughs> Stop. You don't like when he talks All right, dog. next next question. <laughs> Stop looking at um, him. I'm fucking. Uh, I feel so All right, here we go. Slow Wiener asks Topic for a conversation. Ed Atlin. This underrated gem, in his opinion. Uh, what has worked with Zach and Corey, so you obviously got to know him a little bit. 
Uh, can you please talk about your experience with him and also what do you think of his animation comedy style? Here. He seems like a really awesome guy. Ed Allen's a really funny guy. He's really, really quite both both to Go to his channel. Ed Allen. I met him on Skype. Last time I got go audio from him, he was very sick. Yeah. So he probably is dead now. Oh, no. no. He's like dead. genuinely sick? Yeah, he was super sick. He's probably dead now. Yeah, okay, that's all right. He's, he's, he's a dead man. He's a dead man walking if he's still alive. All right, here we go. This all is right. from uh, Le Le Lekix. Uh, Jeff, I remember you saying on Twitter a long time ago that your favorite show was Murder, She Wrote, and I was wondering if you, if I would, if you would ever consider being a writer if they ever decided to remake the show for Modern Rock. Yes, I'm a huge La Andrew Lansbury fan. I'm working my fan fiction. I'm going to send it in. Oh, Thank one. you. Next question. I would love to see you fucking writing on that. Yes. Um... All right, here we go. This is from uh, Tobia Guy. Uh, uh, Oni, I'm curious as to how exactly you figured out how to make music. I study music and, I, and I've always been curious. I study music and I've always been fucked in ass, Zach. This is lightning round, not retard round. I studied music and I have always been curious as to whether anyone can learn how to be, how to be music or if it is just a thing you are born with, thanks. Here's yes. my music lifetime. Uh, I started off making ringtones on my Nokia 3510. Then I started importing mid-eye into Fruity Loops and looking at the how you make music with the chords. Then I started learning music theory on YouTube. Then I started learning to play oh. piano. Then I became a master of music, the end. Can I say oh. something? Can anyone do that? Hey. Can yes. I say something? Okay. Okay, when I learned music, it was because I learned it from here. Well, I just sort of made it I was making music. I wasn't going. No, you were doing that with every other fucking question. Ah, uh, excuse me. I was going. Can we go up with a lightning round theme? What's that? Can we come up with a lightning round theme? Yes, and we'll play it in the background. I was just doing it. Do it. Okay. No, do the American Gladiators theme. No, no, do it. Do it. Okay. If he does that, we should all chime in with a percussion, right? So you go do it. Okay, so it's like do 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 all right. Oh fuck, your phone got you. Yeah. Or not died. You just turned up. All right. There's a couple more questions. All right. Next question. Lightning round. We've got um, uh, from another normal Nick. What are some of the things you would like to do before you die? Something I, like okay, a bucket list. I, I don't think it didn't happen. I just think that was really exaggerated. So I'm moving on. Come and take off. Eat it. I want to visit. <laughs> Yes. I just want to visit. I think I think the numbers are really exaggerated. If you look into the facts, I'm not I'm not doubting. I'm saying look into the facts. There's nothing wrong with questioning history. Six million. I don't think so. What are you talking about? Look, Next look question. Into it. Look at Jeff right now. Look what you're doing to him. I'm I'm not saying I don't believe it. Let let me move on. All right. I want to see a fourth Holocaust. Thank you. All right. Zerg. I wasn't talking about the Holocaust. What's your fucking problem, Jeff? I want to live through three more Holocausts. Thank you. Next oh, question. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I want to key the Batmobile. Next. <laughs> Which one? I want to feel it. Never mind. The real one. Go. I want to fucking jerk your dick off, dude. I want to kiss the president. Okay. I want to suck dude. Zerg Tagi asks, I would love to listen to Zach talking about world news and what he thinks and nobody else. happening in Ukraine. That's nobody else boring. Thank you. That's boring. <laughs> Go to good <laughs> for that. All right, here we go. There's something called the broken, history channel. Broken spikes. Where do you? Oh, where fuck do you? Fuck off, Jeff. Talk about fucking Mad Max. Fuck you, the thunder, you motherfucker. Broken spikes. Fucking says, done. You pick up every day. You know what we got? You know what we got? We got World War One. We got the French Revolution. We have World War Two. We have the Vietnam War. Oh, what else is there? The fucking JFK assassination. Oh, he's a fuck. Broken spikes, where do you guys see sleepy cabin in 10 years? We're all dead. All right. Yeah, exactly. In 10 years? Split up. Broken. What? Losing money. All dead. All dead, except for me, I have stayed in top of hill. Yeah. Smiling. He's a senator. Zach is a senator. In Realistically, Iowa. though. All right, here we go. D&D Movies 42. Oh, wait. Nice move. Nice name, you freak. That's the worst film yeah. ever. Okay, from Fuck That So Good asks, what is the dumbest way you ever tried to stay home from school? Uh, uh, when I was a kid, I tried to be Peter Griffin. Shoot up, uh, shoot up bananas. Um, with some fucking peanut butter and then I remember waiting for my mom to come uh, up to my room and I told her I wasn't feeling well and I spat it this is when I was about eight years old and I spat it on the ground I hit him I, I, I did chicken soup didn't work too well no actually one time I actually tried to get myself sick 
Like I remember they said if you like had wet hair and had a fan blowing on your head. So I actually did that. I got my hair wet and I stood in front of a fan. I slept under an air conditioner all night long, hoping Mick. that I could get fucking sick. Mick. Really sick. Yeah. I hid in the closet and locked myself in and freaked out and started hitting on it in the random like <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> I was so tired, so I kind of passed out on the clothes. That's after school's over, though. Corey, no, one time I figured out. School. One time I figured out if you rub Vaseline in your hands and rub it on it your face. What's the question? Yeah. Stay, you look stay home from school. Like, Corey, yeah, stay home. From no, I know it's like you need to go into this. What? And to stay home from school to not go to school, yeah. I hid in my closet. In yeah, because they didn't see me. Huh? To stay home. Did they not bring you to school? You said you were doing this in the afternoon. No, in the morning. Corey. Oh. Why right. did you get to school normally? Did you walk there? I take the bus. I just thought I could maybe, like, sneak. I thought I could actually. It was like a test. It was like, you I wonder if I could just stay in my room. Wide eyed in but the I, closet. I locked myself in the closet, so I was freaking out and Why screaming my house. You didn't have to lock the closet. It locked by itself. That's what you get for being. Buddy, 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 come on. <laughs> I think we answered everything. I've got a good question. Hey, we have like tons of questions on the Just open up the Reddit and start reading questions. Where is Sleepy Kevin? Where in the world? What is the address? <laughs> Rebels fan X27 asks, "What do you think of monkeys that have throats like frogs?" They're my favorite. Um, I think they say. Ooh. For have you seen those monkeys? Ooh. There's monkeys that have these big fucking disgusting Ooh. like translucent Ooh. frog throats. Ooh. Ooh. The reason Ooh. I see them, I want to stab them in the throat with something. I know. And yeah, see yeah, it yeah, pop if you stab them, go. Yeah, for the best. All right, if you want to know, it's sorted by best. <laughs> They're total safe. Ooh. Lightning round, lightning round, motherfuckers. No. Are there any other YouTubers that you met in real life that were just complete dicks? Like you tried to make friends with them and they gave you the cold shoulder, something like that? Shout out Utah 001. All right, guys, here we go. We're going to end the lightning round with this final one from Toby Sarah. And that is, could you do another improv story? Thanks, but this is a lightning round story. So you don't get to sit around thinking about it. Do right. you want to go bowling, Dad? Yes. Chris, come on, lightning round. We gotta do improv story. Go, right. go in circle. No, do a story. Don't do fucking fake ass improv, bitch. All right. Once there was a beautiful horse in a field, and a young Indian boy who would ride the horse. He dreamed. And then Jeff, and then realized Mick was watching the Neverending Story. You ruined it. And then Artek died. Yeah, then he's Fuck! Now we're just saying the never ending story. And the rock monsters ate rocks. He is an Indian dude. Is he? The Indian yeah. man looked at the horse and said, yeah. I, I want to be your friend. I want to become your friend. No, we gotta start again. It was the never ending story. Fine, you guys start. Okay, you guys start. I'll start it. No, look, look, hey, Corey. Oh. Okay, there once was a skinny, skinny man, droopy eyed retard baby who drooled and vomited on his parents. <laughs> Until they got tired of it and fucking dropped him off at, I don't know, um, healthcare clinic. What shall we call him? Corey, she said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Corey's dad walked in. He looked down in disappointment. He picked up this new baby by his dungarees and he, he threw it at the wall. And then he in said, a healthcare and then in, in a, 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 a a bit of depression, he watched Batman Returns and he said, this is a great movie, let's, let's put him in a baby couch and throw him in the sewer. And he did that. And he floated in. And they ran away as if Corey floated down the sewer. All right. I floated down Corey, the no, it's my turn! Cor Corey, baby Corey, floated down the sewers only to be washed up on the shores of the YouTube Let's Player University where he was accepted uh, and they brought him up the stairs into the dean's office, who then decided to give him a free scholarship. Okay, I learned the arts of being really funny and, and entertaining to kids. I learned how to dangle my uh, keychain and fucking make babies coo. And but little did they know, I pulled out the max, but I was actually a droopy-eyed retard baby. And learning of learning the dis like the deceit or whatever it is, they banished me from the Let's Play channel, and I was forced to walk amongst the fucking loser animation community <laughs> where I met a bunch of fucking mouth breathing retards who were drawing on walls. One was named Zach, one was named Jap, one was named Mick, and a really, really, a really handsome elf boy named Chris. Boy. He walked in and said, hello, my name is Chris. Okay, this is garbage. Good <laughs> That's it. The podcast is ended right now. Yeah! Do 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 do